Good evening, everybody, and welcome to season number 11 of high school football on the CW Columbus. This indeed is Friday Night Rivals. I'm Randy Reinhardt in my 40th year, and a guy that's been by my side for more than a quarter of a century is back again, the football professor, Jeff Logan. Jeff, what a great night. Should be a great season. Well, two great storied programs, Randy, and all is right in the world when Central Ohio gets high school football, and we are proud to bring it to you tonight. And what a matchup we have tonight. Let's take a look at the combatants in this contest. Olin Tangi Liberty, last year, 5-6, and six, only their second losing season in school history. The other one was in 2003, their first year. They are coached by Steve Hale in year number 20. And they've got a guy that's pretty special in offense and special teams. Watch for him to catch the football. His name is Alex Oakley. Yeah, where's number two? And this was their leading receiver from a year ago. He's a big target at six foot three. And the challenge is going to be with a starting sophomore quarterback in Andrew Leonard is finding a way to get this man the ball. He could be a difference maker. On the other side, it is Pickerington Central. The Tigers 12-2 and two last year under Jay Sherritt in year number 20. State championships in 17 and 19. And they've got a guy that is a specimen. His name is Kobe Gorman, and he has started forever on both sides of the football. He really has. This is an elite program, and this young man is an elite football player. Think of the talent that they've had at the Tiger football program in the last decade. Yet this man found a way to start on both sides of the ball as a freshman. He is the real deal, headed to Miami of Ohio to be able to play his college football. Are you ready for season number 11? Let's rock and roll. Are you ready? What a night we have for high school football, and what a matchup as well, too. Olin Tangy Liberty, Pickerington Central. This is the Central Ohio Toyota Dealers Friday Night Rivals, presented by Columbus State Community College in one place on the CW Columbus. Hi, I'm meteorologist Marshall McPeak for the game tonight. Temperatures at kickoff likely to be around 83 degrees. We're still close to 80 by the time we get to halftime. Lots of sunshine for most of the evening. Sun goes down at around 830 ish these days. Overnight, we're looking at temperatures falling into the 60s, but getting there looks great. By 10 o'clock, we're still at 75 degrees. By midnight at 72. It's going to be a beautiful start to your Friday. 
And welcome back to Pickerington Central High School. We're all set now for the Buckeye State Bank kickoff. Start enjoying the benefits of banking local with Buckeye State Bank. Get started today by visiting joinbsb.com. Bliss Archibald has it teed up at the 40-yard line. Twin safeties back deep for the Tigers inside the 10-yard line. And a lot of anticipation becomes reality with this kick. We're underway in season number 11. And the return starting from the 15 across the 20, 25, and the stumble down at the 27 by Raheem Biles. And that's where the Tigers will start on offense some five seconds into this contest. The quarterback for the Tigers returning at QB, Braden Mantooth. Jeff, good numbers last year. They're expecting even bigger things from Mantooth this year. Yeah, big, strong kid, Randy. It's six foot four, five out there. You know, the, it all starts with that quarterback, and his goal tonight is to just take care of the football and let the players around him make the big plays. And a lot of single back looks for the Tigers. A lot of times they'll change packages four players at a time. This time with the one back. And the wing to the bottom on the first and 10 from the 27-yard line. Off the right side, they'll advance the ball across the 20, up to around the, make that the 30, up to the 32-yard line. So Knowledge Gray on the carry. And here's your starting lineup, courtesy of Safe Light. Mittendorf, a guy to watch. He's the leader of the receivers. Keechler, a tight end. It's been around for three years. Good guys in that offensive line. Smith and Egan, plenty of experience. Three years starting for Brock up front. Again, up to the 32 officially. We'll call it second down and five from there. Just 36 seconds into this one. And coming back around with the handoff. Nice cut inside. Now to the outside across the 35 near the sticks. And then some on the run. That is Pinkins. The wide receiver comes around, Jeff, and has a nice gain out to around the 38. Yeah, if you're going to play running back, we'll take a look at the starting off or defense for the Olentangy Patriots first. Courtesy of Safe Light Auto Glass. And their starting lineup looks something like that. And you'll see Bryce Bird near the bottom. He is the only returning starter on that defense. The odd man front gives smaller kids a chance because they don't have that many down linemen, but the ones they do have are pretty good. Watch for Bailey Bird, his younger brother. He is up and coming as just a sophomore. First and ten for the Tigers from the 39-yard line with one man in motion. And off the left side, they'll take it and churning out to around the 41-yard line. A gain of just a couple on the play. As that time on the carry is Biles, and this is a Pickerington Central Tiger offense, Jeff, that I mentioned will have different packages. They could have five or six different guys running the ball in this contest tonight. Yeah, Rasheem Biles gives you a little bit different look back there at six foot two, 200 pounds, starting over there at the running back spot. Knowledge Gray, I was going to say on the play before that, if you're going to play in a Jay Sherrod offense and you're going to be that running back, you're not going to be the featured guy every time running the ball. And Knowledge Gray had a terrific block on that little wingback reverse that came to the short side of the field. Wide outs to either side. Klippner, the widest on an island at the top. One man in motion. On the delay, the handoff off the left side. Is there a gap? Yes, there is, but there's a flag down on the play. Two flags now. Up to the 48-yard line on the carry that time is Terrence Alexander. But a couple of hankies back at the 40-yard line. We'll see if it's coming back. Yeah, it looks like it might go against the defense. It was thrown in an area where you might get holding, but it looked like a defensive player might have been involved in a personal foul. Face mask, yeah. It is the call. Phil Colflesh, our referee in year number 47. <laughs> it makes me feel young. That's great. And there's a bunch of uh, young officials out there on his team as well, which I think is uh, terrific to see. It will be first down for Here's the a call. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Number 10. First, and first down. down. A lot of stories on Tigers. that crew as well, too, that we'll touch on throughout the contest. Combined, they've worked... 18 state championships, one of the most decorated crews in Ohio. One of the few with a father-son combo as well, too, and Rick and Adam Barnes handling things out there, too. Central Ohio, by the way, in danger of canceling lower-level games due to the officiating shortage. They are in need of people. Go to ohsaa.org slash officiating for more information. The 15-yard penalty has the ball first and 10 inside the Patriot 37 at the 36-yard line. Look how tight the splits are on that offense. They do. It's like everybody's in a phone booth. On the keeper this time, it is Mantooth, and he squirms inside the 34 to the 33. That's the one thing, too, we should mention, too, about the quarterback for the Tigers in Braden Mantooth. He rushed for over 300 yards last year. And, Jeff, a long of 50 yards, no fumbles last season. That's pretty spectacular. That's the way to lead your football team. Quickly to the line of scrimmage and getting away from the first defender, but another hanky along the far side of the field. 
And I tell you, the guy that had an initial shot at him was Troy Murkowski, who thought he had him wrapped up around the 35-yard line. And Mr. Colflesh coming our way again with another signal. We've had two penalties, two minutes and two seconds in. Flag resting at the 33-yard line. We should mention two after the call here. Substitution foul, defense. Take it down. So that goes against the Patriots again. Their second penalty. Randy Sub leaves the field and comes back on. And is late coming out of the huddle, Jeff. Yeah. There go the penalty. Yet to throw a pass here in this football game. You know, second and one. Uh, this would light up most football teams wanting to throw the ball on this down. Uh, but expect Jay Sherritt to get that first down first. Tigers salivating on this first drive of this contest in week number one. Mantooth has the ability to change the play, too, at the line of scrimmage. He might be doing that right now for the Tigers. A roll, the pressure, he's on and brought down again. The aforementioned Murkowski helping to make the hit on the play. Jay's going to wish he had run the football there. <laughs> Not very good protection for the uh, play-action play back there. Quarterback Braden Mantooth, by the time he turned around and looked, there was pressure coming right up the middle. Watch again the breakdown at the offensive line. They did not pick up the blitz coming from the uh, left side of the field. That was Blake Hajar that came in from that cornerback position. So it's going to mark the ball back to around the 32-yard line. They have to advance it to around the 26 to move the sticks. On his third down, and a long five, nearly six from the gun now for Mantooth and company. And he'll call his own number, find a gap off the left side, breaks away inside the 15, down the sidelines, tripped up inside the 10, but enough for a first and goal as the tackle is made by Gabriel Pence to save a touchdown. Yeah, good read by the senior quarterback with the lead option. Watch again, he's going to put the ball into the belly of the running back, and he's going to read that offensive line, pulls the ball, and he's able to break a tackle on the perimeter. The aforementioned Blake Hadger coming up to try and make the play. And a touchdown saving tackle inside the 10-yard line. Gain of 30. The Tigers have entered the Bathfitter Red Zone. Transform your bathroom in one day and get started at bathfitter.com. First and goal from the five-yard line. This time, backs are split in the backfield. And they go with the size this time off the left side, trying to bang their way into the goal line. And they're inside the two near the one-yard line. Nice gain on that first and goal play. Is that time on the carry for the Tigers is Gino Williams. Yeah, that's the heavy set that they like to come in with and try and put pressure on the football team. And, you know, they know what to do inside that red zone. Again, I want you to watch the splits of that offensive line. There is not room to get a credit card in between those guys in that offensive line. They're just going to move and control that put that area knowledge gray gets the handoff wow and he gets stonewalled inside the one yard line jeff he did not break the plane big time defensive plays again by the patriots we talked about blake hazier coming up from that cornerback spot number 21 again in the backfield they're gonna have to start accounting for 21 he's lined up right there on your screen he's able to come up and make the play good team tackling and they stopped him right at the point of attack. Hajar last year with only one solo likes lifting in science and also plays baseball. Third down and goal from just past the one yard line. And they'll keep it on the ground and Biles pushes, shoves and breaks the plane in for the touchdown. It's another Ramos roofing touchdown. Get your free estimate on a roof by calling or texting 614-761 roof and just like that tigers lead six nothing in this one yeah it was a classic tiger drive randy uh, not one pass attempted there was one pass play called uh, but a sack of the quarterback but that is just good solid pickerington tiger football carson goulet the diminutive sophomore kicker with a bigger than you can believe leg nails it for the extra point and with 727 left to go and stands in number one the tigers on top in this one to the tune of seven to nothing in week number one so with that being the tally we'll take a break glad to have you aboard the patriots can they answer we'll find out together right here on friday night rivals on the cw columbus with a new toyota you can practically make summer stand still from making a splash in a Highlander to fitting in more fun in a Camry or tackling a trailhead in a RAV4 hybrid. Who's a good boy? 
Enjoy the last of summer in an exciting new Toyota during Toyota's national sales event. Save big on the best-selling SUV, Toyota RAV4, like this electrified RAV4 hybrid with fuel savings over $3,700. Save even more with 1.9 APR financing. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. And our thanks to the Central Ohio Toyota dealers for stepping up and sponsoring high school football in the CW Columbus. It is beach night here in Tigerville, and the locals happy with the start in this contest so far. Up 7-0 early as Carson Goulet was actually just kicking on a backfield with his dad, and Jay Sheridan and company saw him and started talking to him. He went to a Christian school through 8th grade, and all of a sudden now has matriculated over here to Pickerington Central, and he's been a part of this team from the midway point of last season to this season. And a nice return right up the gut for the Patriots all the way up across the 30-yard line as Alex Oakley on the return with a nice setup now for the Patriots. Here's your scoring summary for the Tigers that first drive, courtesy of Kitchen Saver. 11 plays, and you said it, Jeff, the traditional Pickerington Central drive, melting four and a half minutes off the clock to the tune of 73 yards. You know, this is an era where everybody likes to go with that wide open offense. Uh, that's the cool thing to do. But what Jay Sher and Pickerington Tigers have done is done nothing but win state championships using that traditional offense. Andrew Leonard, the sophomore, to lead the Patriots on this first drive. Will hand it off off the left side. They'll get it up across the 35 to the 36, maybe the 37-yard line. Sophomore begat sophomore that time as Jake struck the six foot 185 pound sophomore on the carry and quickly they will come to the line in fact they'll do that a lot tonight as you look at the safe light starting lineups we talked about the quarterback watch oakley and watch Barkus and nelson and roberts can't be overlooked as a tight end too he comes from a great bloodline his brother benton was a great player for the patriots long pass across the middle just a little shy of the mark at the 45 yard line and then it'll be third down. They're trying to get the ball to Oakley going down the seam. Only one receiver in the pattern. And now the defense for the Tigers. Jeff Lamonico handles that. We talked about Gorman in the open. He's a force. They team up a veteran with a junior in the inside of the linebackers. And great experience in the secondary. Biles playing on both sides of the football. And Lane should be a familiar last name to Ohio State and NFL fans as well, too. The bloodline's very strong there with Garcia Lane as his granddad and his uncle Sean Lane. On a third down for Leonard. Looks on the out pattern. Pass nearly picked off. Oakley broke inside. And Jeff, the pass went to the outside. Yeah, good pressure uh, on the quarterback. Again, Andrew Leonard, we talked at the open. It's got that responsibility as a sophomore starting quarterback. Get that ball out and get it out quickly. You want to be on time, on target. And that's a three and out situation for the Pickerington Tigers on defense. Punting situation, fourth and six. Good coverage by the Tigers on the outside by Isaiah Harper as well, too. Oakley stays on the field, cemented it around the 21-yard line with one person back deep for the Tigers around the 30 at 6.45 on the clock. In fact, Biles at times doesn't leave the field, and there's a little rugby move there on the punt. The fair catch called for and taken right at the 33-yard line by Biles. As it's time now to check out your Toyota keys to the game with 6.39 left to go in quarter number one. And for Olentangy Liberty, play older and bolder because they're going up against an experienced Tiger team. And Cap Mantooth, a little dental humor there. We've got to keep an eye on the quarterback for Pickerington Central. On the other side of the football for the Tigers, branch out on Oakley. You can see what he can do offensively and on special teams. And play like a senior Tiger. At Pickerington Central, you pay your dues on the JV to start normally as just a senior. First and 10 from the 33, toss sweep near side, and a good job on the penetration that time as the running back got across the 35-yard line, but he lost his shoe on the play because waiting for him to turn the corner on the play for the Patriots is Zachary Austin. Pretty good job here of making somebody miss on the outside. Good effort there, Zach Austin. One of those senior football players, Randy, that has been waiting his time to be able to compete and participate and contribute to the success of this program. Young man that's been playing since third grade. Up to the 36 they go. Off the left side. Nobody there. And coverage on the outside across midfield. And sailing down the sideline, Terrence Alexander. Another one of the slashing running backs, Jeff, that they have. And Alexander found the gap. Last year he had three carries, 74 yards, a long of 69, and picks up 20 on this play. 
A good execution by the offensive line, but again, Evan Nelson is able to get out there in space and make people miss. Look at his numbers from a year ago. Had three receptions in a, in a touchdown. Alexander with a big run down to the 44-yard line, first and 10 from there. Then they go with the power look to the near side with one back deep in the backfield for Mantooth with one man in motion now, and that's Williams. On the delay off the left side, pounding his vials. Got a little, but not a whole lot. Great penetration that time by Deacon Billy, who helps make the hit up front. A young guy that likes history and has been a starter wherever he's played since eighth grade. A guy that is very versatile, and this time with his frame, 5'10 and 230. They've got the junior up front. So a short gain on the play of about a yard. It'll be second and nine from the Patriot 43. Tigers with the ball and already up 7 nothing in this one. Too wide, way out to the top. Mantooth rolling that way, has a man underneath, dumps the pass, it's complete. Down to the 38 yard line on the play. Casey Middendorf on the reception, number 16. Looked like it. Uh, yep, you're right, it is actually yeah. 16 making the catch on the play. Yeah, now Mittendorf did a good job out there, Randy, of reading the defense. They were in a cover three where they were in a very soft zone. So what he did is he pulled up short, uh, knowing that that defense was going to be deep, gave his quarterback a good target to throw to, and Braden Mountain found him wide open. His 13th catch over the last two seasons, good for 109 yards, marks the ball inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. They need five more here on this third down play. And Mantooth retreats now, speaks to Biles, is running back, and readjusts him to his right. Mantooth on the keeper. Boy, with his frame, Jeff, if he can churn the legs, already he's three yards of scrimmage, and at six feet, he's going to fall forward another two yards. Again, Randy, at six foot four, he towers over a lot of the football players that are out there. Big, strong kid. Again, this was an audible that's going to be quarterback run the entire way, get that offensive line out there blocking. Good lead right up the middle by the center, Brock Egan. He's a senior, moved into that uh, center position, played guard previously. A young man they call Yukon Cornelius. If you've seen him in the promos, <laughs> he's got that strawberry hair and the massive beard as well, too. First and 10 from the 34-yard line. Mantooth to keep again. There's a flag on the play. He doesn't go down until he's inside the 29. Flag resting back at the 36-yard line. And it's coming back. It'll be a holding call against Pickerington Central. You mentioned Phil Colflesh in year number 47. Still looks youthful out there. He'll open up the mic and let us know. Go holding. Offense, 56. Okay, first down. Boy, give Brock Egan all that credit on the previous play, and then he gets called for holding on the next play. So I guess that's the uh, announcer's mistake. Putting a little pressure on that young man out there. No pressure whatsoever. So move the ball back to the 44-yard line. It's still first down. By the way, it's another home appliance solution first down. I thank Brian Peters and the crew. They do a great job at their two locations taking care of you for all your appliance needs. Back to the 44. And Mantooth from the gun. Plenty of time. Dumps it out. And that was kind of a knuckleball pass into the flat that time for Carter. I'm not sure. It didn't look like when Braden was releasing that ball, Jeff, that he had all his fingers on the football. You know, Randy, one of the challenges, uh, at least tonight, I want you to watch the sun down there in the eyes of the quarterback. He's looking right back into the sun. I'm not so sure he had a great view of throwing the football out to his man. And again, the sun sets, that's going to become less and less of a problem. But looking back to his left, to the west, he's looking dead into that sun. I'll take all the sun I can get it at my <laughs> age. I love sun. I hate that winter time. Second down, I'm going to move it at the 44 again, trying to get those 20 yards I need to move the sticks. Pressure coming from the outside on the handoff. Boy, you talk about waiting for your blocks to establish. You saw that perfectly illustrated on that play for the Tigers as they weave their way inside the 40 down to the 39-yard line as Terrence Alexander on the carry again. Now, this is a guy that allegedly is a slasher, but, Jeff, he was very methodical that time, just waiting for the blocks to establish. It's amazing how, how the uh, number of football players that rotate in at that running back spot for the Tigers. and. You know, it's just not one guy that's out there that's their lead. you got to be have a lot of people ready to play in this football game. Deacon Billy makes the hit on the play along with John Kendall, who's omnipresent on defense. They need another 15 after they picked up five on second down. Empty set, five receivers. Mantooth 
with time across the middle. Pass is complete inside the 30, down to around the 28 yard line. It'll be shy of the first down. Take a look at this one more time. Yeah, they love this play, Randy. Just a little skinny post right over the middle, trying to find a, a, a soft spot in that zone to be able to throw the football. And they're able to find the receiver right over the middle. This is absolutely four down territory for uh, a Jay Sherritt football team. So it is fourth down. And they need about three and a half to move the sticks with 2.10 left to go. Again, they'll spread out that defense, this time one back in the backfield. The late handoff goes to Biles. Look at the legs. The churning, the opening, the gap up the middle, and Waltz is into the end zone for a touchdown from 27 yards out with 158 left to go. That's another Ramos Roofing touchdown. Get your free estimate on Roof by calling or texting 614-761-ROOF, and it's now 13-0. Again, good change of pace back there. Good read by the quarterback, Braden Mantooth. Hands the football up, and look at this. Great blocking up front when you sell out at the line of scrimmage, Randy, with so many people in the box. If you're able to break that plane, you're going to find smooth sailing in that secondary. And that's exactly what happened for Rasheem Biles. Goulet, who has a birthday on September the 8th for the 14th point, eyes it, flies it, and connects it. Under two minutes left to go and two touchdowns on the board already for the Tigers. Leading 14 nothing. Let's see if the Patriots have an answer. This is week number one of Central Ohio Toyota Dealers Friday Night Rivals presented by Columbus State Community College in one place on the CW Columbus. Oh boy, watching Friday Night Rivals is easy and convenient. Every game is streaming live on the ABC6 News app, the ABC6 YouTube page, the CWColumbus.com, and of course, right here on your television. And it's all powered by Kroger Great Lakes Distribution Center. Speaking of power, Jeff, we've seen that early on from the tires to a tune of a 14 to nothing lead and they can do fancy things but they can also slug it out on the street corner yeah, as well really can, Randy. Is, you know I, I mentioned an elite football program uh, it, the history of this program over the last 20 years under Jay Sherrod is just off the charts and they weren't too bad before they split the schools <laughs> either 20 years for both of these schools the return going to start from the nine yard line for the Patriots and right up the gut to around the 30, maybe the 31 yard line. On their turn is Brady Karam. Karam, six feet, 160, and a senior on the return. The biggest plays, the biggest schools, the best high school football. You get to see it first thanks to first scores on Fox 28, sponsored by Spectrum. Catch it tonight at 1045 only on Fox 28. It was nice to see Jay Richardson here tonight as well, too, as we did some live hits. On ABC6. I look up to him, you know. Hey, so I does have everybody. To. Yeah, hey, thank you very much. Jay, a former Buckeye and also a Celtic, or excuse me, a Shamrock. Not a Shamrock. An Irish player. Irish, thank excuse you. me. I live in Dublin. How to get this right from Dublin, Scioto. Here's your scoring summary of that touchdown run by Rasheem Biles. 10 plays, 64 yards to 402. Again, some important. Uh, continuation to that drive for Pickerington. Courtesy of Kitchen Saver. Struck on that carry on first down. We'll navigate about a couple on the play. Out to around the 35-yard line. They peer to the sideline. Steve Hale, the head coach, is also the offensive coordinator. They love that spread offense, and you see that look right there. 
And Leonard back to throw guns it. He's got a good arm. And the pass is complete across the 40 to around the 43-yard line. He finds Evan Nelson on the reception last year. Three catches, 70 yards, and a touchdown. And lucky number 13 makes that catch now out to the 43-yard line. Look at this. They want to go quickly now. They were able to create that pass play. That was a confidence builder for quarterback Andrew Leonard. Another home appliance solutions first down for the Patriots. And the pressure on that time, and boy, somebody was shot out of the cannon and nailed him back there. Flag on the play, and coming through like a missile was big number 39. And that is big number 39, as I mentioned. That is the inside backer, C.J. Flannery. And a penalty as well, too, against the Patriots. Flannery is a guy that's one of those juniors we talked about that they team with a senior at inside linebacker, and he was just shooting through there uncontested. Waiting for the call now, officially from Phil Kulflesh to see what the Tigers opt to do. Also on the crew tonight, we should mention Eric Mock is the umpire. You got a little story about him as well, too. Is Mr. Mock is a guy that has quite a bit of broadcasting experience, too. Phil, what do you got? Okay, you're holding. Offense, number 74. Second down. Thank you, Phil. Hold on. And Eric Mock got into radio because I encouraged him to do it a number of years ago and now is in communication for auto line so very proud of eric what he's been able to accomplish on the slant Ooh. pattern wow oh that was kind of a high collar that time on the receiver on the play as the pass was intended for jacob barkus and he's kind of barking a little bit himself but about the hit was it too early and look where the hit took place too that's, that's the same play that they had just tried to use in Xavier maddox number six coming up to make the play a little high around the neck area and maybe a touch early and Toby Gage looked like was your quarterback, too, that tossed that pass. Gage going back to throw, looking long downfield, and the extension, Barkus just missed that by about a yard on the play. So Gage, the quarterback, 6 feet, 165, but a junior. You can see the difference between he and Leonard. Leonard goes about five, nine and a half. Gage about three inches taller. Boy, this was close to a long completion. But it's interesting because they have Andrew Leonard still in the backfield back there. They're changing it up offensively. And we're going to have to change things again because we have a flag on the play. Yeah, C.J. Flunnery broke the line. and Dead ball foul. Encroachment. Defense. So a gift of five yards on the play for the Patriots, and they wait for no man as they have that ball ready to go and ready to snap it across the 37-yard line. Kobe Gorman checks into the football game at the defensive tackle. Number 11, 6'3", 270 senior. Very active. And they throw it back on the short side screen. That is Oakley and not much there. Out to the 40-yard line. And that is about it. As waiting for him to make the hit on the play was big number 14, Isaiah Harper, coming up from the secondary. That is the thing, too. Not only on pass plays, but that secondary of the Tigers, very strong in run support. Yeah, they play five defensive backs in their base defense over there. And Isaiah Harper, one of the strong safeties, able to come up and make the play. Not fooled by the screen. Good reads and expectations there on the on the play. All right. Gonna move the ball up to the 40-yard line. The clock is under 10 seconds. The first 12 minutes of the first game of our 11th season is now history, and it's been all Pickerington Central on top of Olentangy Liberty, 14 to nothing. Quarter two coming up here on the Central Ohio Toyota Dealers Friday Night Rivals, presented by Columbus State Community College in one place here on the CW Columbus.
Raheem Biles with a couple of touchdown runs. And total offense, Jeff Logan, in the first quarter. Pickerington Central, 135. And Olin Tangy Liberty, 17. And that pretty much is the story of this contest after 12 minutes of play. Yeah, Randy, if I'm not mistaken, only one first down in that first quarter offensively for Liberty. Maybe two first downs and uh, really struggling. Fourth and 15, and Oakley with a long run on that rugby boot and gets a lot of leg into that one. My goodness, inside the 15 to the 10. Is that going to go into the end zone? What a boot that was. What, 60 about yards. 60 yards yeah. on that punt. And we'll bring it out with a touchback. Oakley is a uh, weapon there with his leg, and so now the Tigers get it back, and they have to go the length of the field, 12 seconds into quarter number two. First meeting between these two schools last year, the Tigers going 12-2 and two on the campaign. They lost two games, Jeff, by a total of four overtimes. They lost one game during the season to pick North 13-10. to 10. They lost to uh, Upper Arlington 21-14 in triple overtime. Did I mention that Carson Greesock is still running, by the way? No kidding. Boy, that Upper Arlington kid with something else you know if you look at uh, the history of uh, this football team Pickerington Central that loss last year in the playoff ended a five-year run that stopped them at least of being in the semifinals or better in the state championship on a first down play they're going to keep it on the ground and wedge it out to around the 25 yard line around the right side they go and on the carry that time Mittendorf on the carry Casey a guy that can show you he can run the ball and also catch it as a receiver you know Randy much like it's uh, it's happened at, uh, at Ohio State University as we look at this play again the expectations of the football program are so high at Pickerington Central that losing and not getting into that semifinal Unfortunately for some people, they look at that as a failure in the season. I don't agree with that, but the expectations are so high for this program to succeed. On a second down and five, halfway home. Mantooth got to the 26 and hit a wall of Patriots there, preventing the invasion. Gained one on the play, third down and four. Well, it's a credit, too, to Jay Sherrick. Really followed in the shadows of Jack Johnson, but Jay, the 57-year-old mentor, will turn 57, actually, in September the 4th. has done a masterful job in his 20 seasons, never worse than 6-4. and four. He's been there since an assistant in 1990. Not only is his birthday on September the 4th, but Jeff Lamonico, his defensive coordinator, same day, September the 4th, but four years younger to the day. I'll tell you what, I think those guys spend more time with each other than they do with their own families. Uh, they have been committed to this program for a number of years. Two great coaches. And to this date, Jeff has not smiled. Toss sweep, far side. Biles, 25, 30, yes. 31, yes. 33. And up to around the 34 with that second pirouette. And that's enough for another first down. First down brought to you, by the way, by Bowling Green State University. Yeah, if you're going to compete against this Pickerington Tiger football team, you have got to stop them on third and long. And this time, this is a very simple toss sweep into the boundary. And you can see missed tackles all along the way. Good effort again by Rasheem Biles. He's a tough guy to bring down. But when you've got white jerseys up there making the play, you've got to make sure you bring him down. Raheem has got that mix of size and speed as Steve Hale hopes his defense can find an elixir right now. But, you know, at 6'2 two, and 200, he can slash and he can work his way inside between the tackles. The handoff a little high that time, but spinning and finding a gap to the outside. And Mantu doing his best to not block on that play. It's coming to the outside. It was Alexander. Took it inside and outside. And Mantu saying, Ole, I don't want to block anybody in the back here. So again, we talk about the fact that there's been missed tackles out there. And again, this is a play that should have been stopped at the line of scrimmage. But the athleticism of Terrence Alexander and his willingness to not give up. I want you to watch his vision. He's got his head up. He's looking for that opportunity. Keeps the legs churning all the time. Ball in the outside arm. I'm going to give him an A-plus on that run. And give him 17 yards to boot first and 10 from their own 48-yard line. Winding down to 9.41 left to go in the first half. The Tigers up 14-0 already in this one with two wide to the top, two to the bottom. Quick pop out in the flat, short side again, and not a whole lot there. I always wondered about throwing to the short side of the field as that time they get it out to Isaiah Crozier, and there's not a whole lot there. No, not a lot of space, but and Randy, there's also a numbers game. We're right. trying to realize that there's not as many defenders on that short side of the field. So you're trying to get one-on-one -on -one situations where your athlete has a chance to beat their athlete. You can see the blocking out there. But again, there were two Pickerington Tigers on the defensive side coming up to make the play. John Sansbury happy with his Patriot defense that time, trying to stop Brian Doherty and Jay Sherritt in their offense. That offense, one back offense, most of the time uses a lot of quick hitting plays, hitting the gaps, and also with three wideouts. Can set you up for the boot pass and play action passes as well, too. Second down, they need 13. 
Van Toot has time, has a man wide open. That is Mittendorf down the sidelines and no contact till he reaches the 30-yard line. Flow one way and nobody goes to the other way. And Mittendorf with a big gainer. Yeah, they changed jersey numbers on us at the beginning of the football game. And Mittendorf wearing that number 10. This time he looks downfield. Watch here. He's looking for the post. And then he is able to go to his secondary receiver who was wide open. Able to get the ball on the flat and nothing but wide open spaces. And they are in business inside the 30-yard line. So it is a first down and 10 from the 28-yard line and that huge gainer that time for the Tigers. And the numbers on Mittendorf so far. There's Jay Sherritt. Good for 27 yards. And off. Biles drags defenders inside the 28 to the 27-yard line. Hit made on the play for the Patriots by Blake Hajar, who had a strong first series on defense 5 11 170 and a senior it's the one thing we were mentioning jeff early on in this contest the lack of uh, experience on the defense for the patriots basically from what we see is bryce bird the only returning starter we should add a footnote to this contest that for the first time in 40 years we were not granted an interview with a coach and steve hale declined to talk to us before this contest tonight so it's second down and nine now man tooth again looking from that gun set with two wide at the top Going to hand it off off the right side. We've got whistles before we start that. And a flag on the play with 7.52 left. It's going against the Tigers. What do you got there, Phil? Handball foul. False start. Offense number two. Number two. We mentioned the Rick Barnes, Adam Barnes, working as the linesman and line judge of this crew. Rick and I may be somewhat responsible for the fact that we have a continuous clock in games where the decision is probably 30 points or better. We were watching a Hartley playoff game, and we said, you know, what's the point of playing this? In some states, they go ahead and go with a continuous clock. And I know it's something that Rick then had mentioned. And a short time later, we had that scenario, which we might have tonight. You never know. Where the margin is greater than 30 in the second half. The clock will be continuous, and dancing to the outside is Ethan Pinkins, who had the ball in the first quarter on a carry, and he's got speed to burn, and Pinkins with a nice gain around the left-hand side. Yeah, the, the, the sheer speed of this football team, Randy, is something special, and the number of players that can make plays is something special as well for Pickerington. You know, I had a dad that coached youth football with me, or he wanted to coach. I wouldn't let him. We made him run the clock up up, up in, the, uh, in the stands, and he decided one day it was too cold, so he decided to just run a continuous clock. He thinks he invented the, the <laughs> continuous clock because he was too cold. He wanted to go home. I like that. Youth football at its best. Third down. I never let him do the clock again. And the Tigers going to burn a timeout. They had a substitution issue there in one of their packages. They didn't have enough guys on, so they'll burn the timeout. They will take their first one and fast first one by either team in this first half. And now a word from our good friends at Toyota. With a new Toyota, you can practically make summer stand still. From making a splash in a Highlander to fitting in more fun in a Camry or tackling a trailhead in a RAV4 hybrid. Who's a good boy? Enjoy the last of summer in an exciting new Toyota during Toyota's national sales event. Save big on the best-selling SUV, Toyota RAV4. Like this electrified RAV4 hybrid with fuel savings over $3,700. Save even more with 1.9 APR financing. Come in today. Toyota. Let's go places. You know, Jeff, always go over some of the rule changes. The chop block has kind of been redefined a little bit uh, right now. Before it was one block above the waist and the other at or below the knee. Now it's just below the waist. Also, they have added an exception for the pass or whoever's throwing the ball. If you roll out and throw the ball, if it makes it back up to the neutral zone, even if it's out of bounds, like if the line of scrimmage is a 25, you roll to the 18, you throw the ball out of bounds at the 20. But if you extend the sideline and it's still on the fly at the 25, you're allowed to go ahead and do that. Also, starting this year, Jeff, you can wear the number zero. You cannot wear double zero. You can't wear zero seven. But if you're so inclined, you can wear zero if you consider zero a number. That's a different discussion for a different day. Handoff off the left side. They needed about six on the play. They won't get it all that time as Knowledge Gray on uh, the carry. That's one of my favorite names in football this year, Knowledge Gray. It is pretty good. Solid JV season. A grinder can break a run. Last year, he was good for 23 carries and 183 yards. Good for an eight-yard average, four touchdowns, and again, no fumbles last year for Knowledge Gray. Well, that's one of the reasons he's listed as that starter. Terrence Alexander, number 13. You see him in the middle of your screen there, checking in now at the tailback spot. 
They like Ethan Perkins, who goes to the top of the, your screen along with number two. Let me get that one. That is Mr. That's, Maddox. That's, that is Xavier, one of the Maddox twins, Byron Maddox. The assistant coach now here, and a flag on the play. They get the ball inside the 20 to 19, but there's a hanky at the 21. Byron Maddox, the guy that played his high school ball at Groveport Madison, covered him as a player then. Holding is going to be the call on the Tigers, so we'll see if that changes their play calling. And now he's got twin sons, and he's the receivers coach now. Used to be the head coach at Walnut Ridge for the longest time. What do you got, Phil? Go holding. Okay. Offense, 56. That's been declined. Turnover on downs. First down. All right. They didn't get enough of the yardage. They continued to the end of the play. It was not a dead ball call. So with that being said, take a look one more time on the delay. And Mantooth trying to find the gap. Good job that time with the penetration on the play by Zachary Austin to help make the hits. The man who likes reading, running, and history. Yeah. he got his team running the defense off and the offense on. First defensive stop that they've been able to make for the Patriots. And here's Leonard to throw. On the out for Oakley, a little high on the play at the 22-yard line. He was covered like a blanket on the play by Isaiah Harper. If you watch Andrew Leonard on this play, Randy, this is, again, a young quarterback, just a sophomore, throwing the ball off his back foot here. He's got to make sure that he gets his feet set and deliver the football and you can see there just a little bit on his back foot and the ball sailed on him leonard a guy that was one of three passing last year for negative three yards and an interception so not much playing time as they'll keep it on the ground this time and get it up to around the 18 or the 19 yard line is that time they tried to find a little gap off the left side but not a lot there there for for wesley nath so listed as george but he goes by wesley or west and he's on the carry that time we we're told, too, we could see Struck at running back, but Wes could see some time, and Landon Hunter and even Ryan Shapker could see some time. Kill the siren. Third down and just about 10 right now from the 19-yard line. Well, we've got a man-tooth out there, and I hear a siren. It makes me think of Emergency, the old series on NBC with Randolph Mantooth, right? And back to throw, and Leonard rolling to his right, looking, and he's going to be just pushed and grabbed out of bounds on the play. Nice job by Troy Lane. So you probably know something about his lineage then, too, do you not? With Absolutely. Uh, great football family there, no question about it. That time, Andrew Leonard should have taken advantage of that new rule on throwing the football out of bounds without it being a grounding play. You can see here it's flushed out of the pocket. Got to get rid of the football here. Can't eat it back there. Now you're going to get a full out rush from the Pickerington Tigers going after the punter. Now, remember, they love to go with this rugby kick back there. But this is an area of the field where you don't want to get too fancy. Just get the ball snapped back, get it out quickly, and cover up. Well, he likes to roll to his right. He doesn't have that much room to the right now. He's about eight yards deep in the end zone. Penalty flag. Alex Oakley. Delay. Phil, give it to us, buddy. Dead ball, delay of game, offense. This doesn't help the situation, Randy, because now Alex Oakley is going to be backed up with his heels on the edge of the end zone there, and Coach Steve Hale can't be happy with not getting his special teams ready to play. Alex did a great job of looking where his feet were near the back end, and again, just a straight-on punt, as you mentioned, with a return to oh, start from terrific. the 37 and end there, and we've got a... Just a marker. Marker put down at the 38-yard line. 5.46 left to go. Tigers on top of the Patriots. 14-0 here on Friday Night Rivals on the CW Columbus.
Coming up, it's the Door Depot Halftime Show. I'll be joined by OCC Commissioner Ken Baker and Michael Starner, who serves a dual role as the OCC president and also the principal of Owen Tangy Liberty High School, plus a full rundown of scores from around Central Ohio. It's all coming up in the Door Depot Halftime Show. Door Depot, Central Ohio's garage door experts. Does your garage door need replaced or repaired? Discover how Door Depot can help you by visiting their website, columbusdoordepot.com. Check it out. So first and 10, mark the ball at just past the 38-yard line of the Patriots for the Tigers. Rasheem Biles, good work when you can get it. If you can score on touchdowns 33% of the time, you touch the ball. Jeff, I'll take it any time. <laughs> That's pretty good out there. Great field position to start this drive. This is a perfect scenario for this offense. Another BGSU first down, the man tooth with time. Surveying the field, now calls his own number, gets what he can, and goes out of bounds. See who fights another day, right? Gets it inside the 35-yard line to around the 33. And yeah, we've been talking uh, the last few years about these things called RPOs, run pass options, and that's probably the best example right there of a quarterback who's got all of those options ahead of him. And now the Tigers rapidly to the line. Three backs in the backfield. Big opening for Biles on the outside, and nobody's going to catch him. Raheem Biles crosses the goal line for the third time in the first half, and with 5.31 left to go, it is another Ramos roofing touchdown. Get your free estimate on a roof by calling or texting 614-761-ROOF. Check that. Was that 13 on the carry instead of three? So 13, that is Terrence Alexander. He joins the touchdown fray as 13, a lucky number for Terrence, will take it in for the score and make it 20 to nothing. Yeah, just a smaller, maybe quicker version of that running back, Rasheem Biles. Ter Terrence Alexander having a great first half for his football team, able to break the big one. And extra point time for Goulet, and nails that one, so it's now 21 nothing. 5-31 left to go in this first half. The Tigers explosive with that one-two punch of Biles and Alexander. And we mentioned, too, that if you need the size up front, you've got Geno Williams you can add as the bulk in there as well, too. So many ways they can hit you, and that is just on the ground. And by the way, I want to remind you that coming up at the end of the half, the music go around Coach's Corner will be coming up. We'll have the coach from Pickerington Central give us his thoughts on the game this far. Music Go Round can help with all your instrument needs at 2630 Bethel Road in Gehanna inside the Stone Ridge Plaza. Check it out. Music Go Round. They've been great supporters of the CW and Friday Night Rivals. So what a difference just a couple of plays make. And again, rapidly for the Tigers to the line of scrimmage, Jeff. And just like that, break it to the outside, and they're up by three scores. Yeah, and, and obviously Terrence Alexander is a very gifted athlete with great moves and speed and everything. But the thing that impresses me so far with this young man is his vision. He's had a couple of plays where letting things develop ahead of him. And that time, a good job of being heads up, looking for what's there, making people miss, and going the distance. Goulet moved up through the varsity halfway through last year. He's done a great job kicking. That time their turn's going to start from around the 15. And up to the 20, maybe the 25-yard line. And that is it. A return of just about 11 yards on the play for the Patriots. They'll have the ball back now down by three touchdowns. Is that time on their turn? It is Jacob Burkus, one of the wideouts in the squad. So if you're the Patriots, Jeff, we've got to talk about in a second what they are doing well because so far they're looking to establish something as you check out the scoring summary courtesy of Kitchen Saver. And you can get your dream kitchen in under a week with a free quote at kitchensaver.com. So quickly, boom, they score on a touchdown play, and now the Tigers are up by three touchdowns. Yeah, a little field position battle going back and forth between Liberty and Pickerington Central. Central getting the better of it. Patriots looking to throw, trying to throw, and nothing there. Helmet lost on the play as well, too. Is that Leonard who lost the helmet? It is. You know, we talked about, you know, he had a little experience last year, but most of it, you know, when you take a look at the quarterback situation last year, for Owen Tangy Liberty was in the person of J.J. Siebert and Ryan Groey. So he'll have to sit out of play because of the helmet coming off. Tobias Gage comes in there at quarterback. We saw earlier in the first half, and he faces a second down and long now. The ball marched back inside the 20-yard line. And he'll keep it. And hand it off to Jake Struck. A little problem there with the handoff. But again, going back to the initial question, what can the Patriots do? Have they shown the ability offensively to establish anything? Well, Randy, they've, they've, they've had a little bit of success, but it's the momentum of being able to keep drives alive. They're just you know, going up against a very strong, talented, experienced defense. 
And unfortunately, if that pass, like if they're going to throw the football, if that pass hit in there right away, that offensive line cannot protect that quarterback for long periods of time. Andrew Leonard gets the signals, looks at his wristband. He's got one back in the backfield in Struck now on his third down and 11. Looking to his right, downfield, throwing a pass. He's picked off on the play. Intercepted at the 45, to the 35, down the sideline to the 30, inside of the 20, all the way down to the 18-yard line. Great anticipation by Troy Lane, who finds an alley, if you will, and has a big turnover for the Tigers. Oh, uh, that's Troy Lane, plays that strong safety spot back there, and a very accomplished football player. What a great track athlete as well. I'll share that with you in just a second. But perfect defense there underneath. Quarterback throwing the ball into coverage. And this young man, a senior, was the state champion in the 100-meter dash, the 200-meter dash, and also anchored the 4 by one state championship team for Pickerington Central last year. And a great non-block by Isaiah Harper because he could have been called for a block in the back and did a great job of backing away from that. On this Bowling Green State University first down. Guess who? Alexander again looking for the pylon. Does he make it in? Touchdown! That was rapid. 4.07 left to go. And then it was 27 to nothing. Once again, another Ramos roofing touchdown. Again, the same play that they had scored on previously, running the ball to the weak side, to the short side of the field where there's less defenders. Boy, if you watched Ohio State play a year ago against Oregon when Oregon just kept running the ball into the short side of the field and no adjustments being made by the Ohio State defense, not that I'm angry about that or anything. No, not at all. But that is the same situation there where they are looking at the numbers game and, and running that ball into the short side of the field and believing that their number 13 is going to be able to make somebody miss on the outside. And that's exactly what has happened on those last two runs. Right now, Biles and Alexander are tied at two apiece when it comes to touchdowns, yielding 28 points for that man, Jay Sheraton Company. As they have a large lead here late in the first half, 28 nothing. a team that went 12-2 and two last year. We mentioned that a team that too offensively, when you look at it, Jeff averaged 325 yards total offense, 246 of those on the ground, and gave up 143.4, 75 on the ground, 67 through the air. Here is your scoring summary courtesy of Kitchen Saver. Now, that was easy, wasn't it? 18 yards. Eight seconds, and just like that, yeah. thanks to Kitchen Saver. Get a free quote, by the way, kitchensaver.com. It's 28 nothing. Last two plays, Randy, all big plays for touchdowns. You get a one-play drive, takes eight seconds, touchdown. You have another one-play drive, 22 seconds, touchdown. Goulet with the boot again. And the return is going to start from the 14-yard line to the outside up across the 25 to the 26. As Brady Karam on the return, is this the toughest coach him up job that Steve Hale may have all season? You know, I think you know, I think coming into the game from a reality standpoint, he knew that his football team wasn't as experienced maybe as the Pickerington uh, football team, but the one thing you got to do is you got to go out there and you got to just execute and I think that uh, he's got to be pleased with some of what he's seen out there, but Man, the missed tackles, at least at this point, from my standpoint, are something that's a concerning uh, happening over and over again for this pick or for the uh, Old Tangy Liberty defense. They've done a great job during the summer and training, Jeff, to talk about leadership, breaking into small groups, defining terms, and then understanding what those terms mean and how they equate those terms to football. And the Patriots will be tested now to understand those definitions as struck. The sophomore and the carry. And think about this, too. You've got a sophomore quarterback handing off to a sophomore running back, Jeff. So there's yeah. a lot of youth in that offensive backfield. Well, think, take, take a look, Randy, at, at the Olentangy Patriots schedule. I mean, obviously on the road opening the season at Pickerington Central. Next week they get a rematch with Glenville. Glenville always a historic program out of the Cleveland area. And then they play at St. X down in Cincinnati, a team they lost to 49 to nothing a year ago. But Glenville, a team they beat last year 7-6. to six. Getting by the tar blooders. Second down. Under three and a half left to go. Leonard wants to throw. Guns it long downfield into triple coverage. And the pass, is it picked off? Or was it caught or is it incomplete? They rolled it incomplete. Now, we saw that Leonard had the arm, but maybe to the far side, he had a receiver uncontested at the 49-yard line. And again, when you have a young quarterback, sometimes they will think through things and going to deliver the football where they're going to prejudge where it's going. This is exactly what happened. Look at the receiver, top of the field, wide open. That's Alex Oakley. But the ball was thrown up so high that people were able to adjust on it. So very difficult throw to be able to complete. 
Andrew with a third down now with some time looking. Now gunning it across the middle and the pass incomplete intended on the play for Gage who was in there as a wide receiver. So Gage in there as a wide out and the pass falls incomplete. So now it'll set up a fourth down scenario with 317 left to go. The other thing, too, when you look at Leonard, you think he's going to grow not only from a learning standpoint, but physically, too, at about 5'9 or 5'10. Jeff, maybe a little trouble seeing over the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and I think the challenge back there for him right now is if that pass is not available right now, and I'm talking within three seconds after that snap, there's just no way that that offensive line is going to be able to keep the protection there. So I think they need to shorten the passing game a little bit, give him a chance to maybe build his confidence. He's 2 of 10 passing. Oakley with a long, long rumble to the outside. Biles looks at that one, bounce inside the 30. I'm telling you something, that is a gun that Oakley has. You can talk about Alex all you want as a wide receiver, but, folks, his punting has been tremendous. He has a 60-yarder already in this contest now with 3.08 left to go. That one was 43 yards. It'll be first and 10 for the Tigers one more time, already up by four touchdowns. So the Tigers get it back. Steve Hale pottering moves at halftime. This is a team, too, and you mentioned the schedule that they have, but, you know, Coach Hale will tell you to be the best, Jeff. What do you have to do? You got to play the best. You got to. Absolutely. Well, he's got that on his deal. Pickerington Central, by the way, in their scrimmage at a four way with Canal, uh, Winchester, St. X, and Centerville, uh, some other pretty good programs. And they also scrimmaged against Kaufman in preparation for the 22 season. And what does Jay say about St. X? They always have a receiver who's 6'6. Six, six. Always, <laughs> no matter what. First and 10 just past the 30. They'll keep it on the ground off the left side. And Burring his way out to around the 34-yard line on the play. It'll be knowledge Gray again, the 5'10 senior. And if you're Pickerington Central, Jeff, I would assume you'd love to drain this clock, get that extra score, and then maybe work on a continuous clock early in the second half. Yeah, man, they're not going to take their foot off the pedal, obviously, but I want you to watch the aggressive tackle here that is made at the line of scrimmage. This is the way you play defense. That is a fantastic job. And that is Nate Mogg coming up from that strong safety position. 180-pounder making people... Uh, feel like uh, there's a presence of him out there that they're going to remember. And you may know his dad and remember him from a two-year letterman in academic All-Big Ten at Ohio State for John Cooper. Coming back around, look at this. Trying to find a gap and waiting and spreading out. Good job by the defense to spring it out but at that time. Pinkins looked for the opening and couldn't find anything. As we talk about flowing to the football, that's what Pickerington likes to do, by the way, defensively push everything to the sidelines. At that time, the Patriots do a good job of spreading that out. Any question about what uh, they want to try and do on offense? They have to hurry up with third and one. And they'll keep it on the ground off the right side. And Alexander should have it. Beats the tackle, gets it out to across the 42-yard line. Hit made on the play by Blake Hajar. Hajar makes the hit, but the quarterback got to him about a yard too late, and it's another BGSU first down with 2-10 and ticking. First half for the Tigers, up 28-0. Well, how about the schedule, you know, for the Tigers? As you look at that and you look at the replay one more time, they've got Elder, they've got Wayne, they've got Pick North, they've got Gahanna Lincoln. All easy games the next four weeks, right? I like what Jay Sherrod said before the football game. As an offensive team, our goal is to have third and one. Now, how many coaches would sit there and tell you that their goal is to have third and one? But that's what he wants to do on an offensive standpoint. Not looking to make a bunch of home runs and everything. Give me third and one and we'll win the football game. That's exactly what has happened tonight. Tigers take their second time out. I was noticing that Mantooth has the man stash going as well, too. So you've seen that the mustache is coming back. Have you contemplated that, Jeff, at all? Oh, I'll pass. You can grow hair on some of your head, can't you? I'm just curious. Uh, some of my face. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Jay Sherrod and company taking the time out. Jay, we mentioned, you know, the fact that, you know, he did some time under Jack Johnson, too, a, a mentor for so many here out in this community, what he did in the past, too. And Jack is a guy that, you know, battled cancer in the past and just really an inspiration to so many people. And now Jay Sherrod is filling that role. 20 years, when you think of his mark, he's 202 and 38. That is ridiculous. In the playoffs, he's 43 and 16, four undefeated regular seasons since 2007. Never had a losing season since they've been Pickerington Central. And that goes back some 20 campaigns. Yeah, success breeds success. And there are a lot of young families with football heritage that have decided that Pickerington is the place to live. Mantu with forever to throw it, goes to the far side, has his man. And across midfield all the way down to the 42-yard line, Xavier Maddox. 
Byron will be taping that play so we can watch his son. The X man with a nice catch and a nice gain on the play of 15. He's got a chance to visit with the former head football coach Byron Maddox before the foot the, the game. What a terrific gentleman he is, and love to see his twin boys out here playing football for Pickerington. From the 42 of the Patriots now with under 90 ticks left in the first half, up 28. Mantooth. Boy, he has had all day to throw that, and just that time cannot get on the same page with Pinkins. It'll be second down and 10 with 121 left to go. Yeah, he's going to want that one over again, and Ethan Pinkins is going to have a conversation with his quarterback about leaving him hanging out to dry over there on the sidelines. Just short-armed the ball out there and really put his receiver at risk. Jake Stewart, our stellar statistician, tells us the total plays in the first half. Olentangy Liberty with 18, Pickerington Central with 39 plays. I'm not so sure that's a mustache. I think that's chocolate milk. Oh, stop that. I'm not going there. That is not advanced enough to be able to call it a, a man stash. I tried one recently, but it was yeah. all gray. Uh, I look like my father. Second half. On the boot. Mantooth getting some pressure, trying to turn the corner. And you can see that speed that he talked about. Remember Jay Sherrod said he was a triple threat? That time he got to the corner because Bryce Bird was trying to fly all over it. Bird, the only returning starter in defense who likes golf and science, brother of Bailey Bird. But watch this. Mantooth saying, oh, let me do a little naked boot here. And then all of a sudden, watch Bird just shooting up from the strong safety position and force him out of bounds. So they were pulling the left guard, Kellen Smith, number 58, 6'3", 335. He was a little late to the uh, to the scene. He, he's going to have to get a little hustle in his giddy up if he's going to get out there in front and be able to protect his quarterback. But that is a lot of man to move. And then it was third down. 75 ticks left in the half. And look at this. Snap goes to whom? Oh, no. Mr. Alexander. Oh, no. He's got the gap off the left side. They'll be up by more than 30 at halftime. Another Ramos roofing touchdown as he takes it in for the score from 40 yards out. Get your free estimate on a roof by calling or texting 614-761 roof. And then it was 34-0. Yeah, third touchdown of the game for number 13, Terrence Alexander back there in the shotgun formation. No question who was going to carry the football. And this is good execution up front blocking, but again, athleticism and vision being the difference there in able to put the ball into the end zone and a forgetful first half for the Liberty football team. Tescasse Goulet with another point, make it 35 on the board now with 106 left to go. As for Carson, his fifth extra point and third touchdown for that man as he takes it in for the touchdown. Terrence Alexander and Raheem Biles have been the one-two punch here in the first half. They've got guys like Mittendorf that we talked about. But again, I think it goes back to the focal point that we talked about of Braden Mantooth. Knowing what to do, understanding the offense. We talked about the fact that he can run, he can pass in the pocket, and he can throw on the run. And there's a little coaching time right now with Jay Sherrod, even after a touchdown run of 40 yards. It, it, isn't that the history of a football coach, though? Isn't that what they're all about? You have a kid that makes a great play like that. You're not over there nef necessarily high-fiving him. Sure, he's complimenting him, but he also is going to coach him up a little bit and say these are the kinds of things we need to continue to improve upon. Goulet has it teed up. And remember, too, the Patriots will get the ball to start the second half. So we'll see what adjustments Coach Hale and company can make. And, you know, they've got Brent Morrison, who used to be the head coach at Westerville Central, now is the running backs coach. So a lot of experience in that team. And a lot of former head coaches are hooking on as assistant coaches now. Great article by the dispatch and this week people about that. Nice return across the 30 to the 35 and up to the 36 yard line. Nicely done around the right side that time by Charles Hughes, the six foot 180 pound senior. Good field position now for the Patriots. Here is your scoring summary, and we'll add it with a little replay, courtesy of Kitchen Saver. Nice little juke to the outside. Finds the gap inside, Jeff, and found it between center and left guard. And, you know, there's some good size there with Brock Egan, the three-year three, the three -year starter, at 285, and Keelan Smith at 335. Well, it was a great job by the offensive line. You saw the, the width of that hole to be able to go through. Doesn't take anything away from the run, but do give some credit to that offensive line. Another Bowling Green State University first down finds an out pattern that's complete out to the 41-yard line. 
And it goes on the play to Evan Nelson, who makes a second catch in this game. Young man who had an 11-yard touchdown catch against Berlin last year. I think he used to wear number 41 in the past, and there's 41 seconds left in the first half. And rapidly, as you watch the replay, Leonard is rolling out to the right, looking and gunning downfield and throwing it away. Now he got the ball, rolling out up to the line of scrimmage, or the neutral zone, if you will. And so it'll be now a stoppage of the clock. And you'll we'll look at a third down in five scenario. Yeah, and this is going to be moving the pocket from the very beginning and just not enough open receiver out there to be able to find and unload the football and live another day. And Jake Strzok will learn that he has to follow through with that block too and not bounce off once. Leonard on the out. The quick pop goes to Strzok. He's got the catch. He's got the first down and dives to the 50 and out of bounds and has that first down with 27.6 left to go in the first half. You know, Jake Strzok was a JV player back in uh, 21. Uh, no carries uh, a year ago. Sophomore quarterback, obviously, six or sophomore running back, excuse me. Six foot, 185 pounds. Great future for him. His dad played safety at Toledo as well, too. 25 ticks left to go, and this time the pattern goes to the near side. And it's Oakley who's got the catch, who's pushed out of bounds on the play by Crozier, but that moves his sticks a little bit again, and they'll get the ball inside Tiger territory for one of the few times in this contest with 22.9. They've got a first down at the Pickerington Central 40-yard line. Whistles before we start the play. We're gonna have a procedural call. I think maybe a false start against the Patriots a little bit of movement on that offensive line False start offense Pick seven. First down Jeff you think we can hang on for year 47? Yeah, that's I'll tell you what that is impressive I'm very proud of what he's doing and and mentoring young officials out there is one of the greatest gifts that he can give to the program there you see the left guard Alex Conley jumping a little bit early Leonard rolls, looks, guns on the out pattern, and off the fingertips of the attended receiver on the play. That is Wilson Roberts, who is trying to corral that football. He comes up just shy of making that reception. As we have 16.5 on the clock. Last year for Wilson, two catches, younger brother of Benton Roberts. And I think we're going to have a timeout taken now with 16.5. Again, trying to look on something you can build on for the second half. Now, obviously trailing 35 to nothing, there's not a whole lot of positive out there. But the one thing that's going to happen here, Rasheem Biles, who's playing that free safety position, broke on that ball and misjudged it. Had that ball been thrown a little bit more accurately, they got themselves a touchdown. Steve Hale once described his offense, by the way, as a spread offense. Make the opponent defend the whole field. Get your athletes in space. And he used to say, Take whatever you're given and look for the best grass. <laughs> Do you understand what that means? Can you explain that to the rest of the class? About Open the area. Ah, Open okay. area. Thank you very much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you in the second half, though, uh -oh. a little bit of grass lesson. You know, I was told there'd be no math in this. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay. Grass. All right. I want, you notice that we're playing on a natural turf field. I've heard of those, yes. Do you remember how bad this field used to be in the, in the history? Oh. and how beautiful it is tonight. I'm right. going to tell you what transformed in the last four years here in Pickerington. You are the Paul Harvey of high school football with that. Start. Oh, and look at the pick on the run on that play by Grimes. Down the sidelines, Grimes inside the 30 and knocked out of bounds at the 20. Man, you talk about <laughs> precision timing on the play. And 54 yards on that pick on the play. That is a crime by Grimes. Yeah, that is stealing. Hey, you're back there. You are watching that ball. You are a hawk. Here comes the ball, and you can see right there. It is no question Derek Grimes is going to be one-on-one -on -one with that football. I don't think the quarterback, Andrew Leonard, ever saw number four out of the cannon right there. And able to take it down and Randy with 4.8 seconds. They're going to go ahead and try to kick a field goal from the 28 yard line. They're one man short. They got the wing on the bottom now. Could be a 38 yarder. Goulet's range is about 40 or so. We'll see. Now a stutter step. Let's see if that threw him off at all. There's the kick. There's the leg. It was no good. Did you notice he anticipated the snap by a half count? So he was a little off and tried to get back and do the kick again, basically. And they come up empty. And at the break, it's 35 nothing. Another coach him up moment right now for Jay Sherrod. He's out there talking to the special team saying, what happened there was that stutter step yeah. by Carson. Did we miss the snap count? Uh, you got to be ready when that uh, coach calls uh, field goal team. 
you know, whatever happens out on the field, you got to make sure that that special teams is ready to go out there and make sure you've got the the right uh, number of players that are part of that package out there. And he had that moment to coach them up and talk to the special teams unit because Goulet, again, with that little hesitation step and tried to come back. And, Jeff, once you go like that, it's hard to plant and push off the correct leg then and get the kick and the distance that you need. So with that being said, we're going to talk to a coach here on our music go around coach's corner in just a second who's got to be fairly happy but you know he'll find something to coach him up about and that's the one and only jay shared who's down on the sidelines with his team up 35 nothing at the break jay was that a coaching moment for special teams there i could hear randy now i can't oh okay hey jay was that a special teams moment were you talking to the special teams out there about that field goal attempt having a little bit of difficulty with uh, coach coach Sherrod, can you hear us but he looks great in his central football <laughs> coat I could as hear well, him, too. then it just went dead. Well, that's a story of my life, so you're not the first one to tell me that. So we'll hopefully see if we can get that corrected. Jay, if you can hear us in a second, let us know. You got me now? Yeah. All right. Um, did you go out there to talk to the special team? It looked like Goulet took a step forward and then kind of moved back at the same time there. Well, we're playing Nolan Tangy Liberty. you got to play him right till the, till it's halftime. doesn't matter what the score is or anything like that. And we had a guy not go out there on the wing. And no matter what the score is, I know Coach Hale will do the same thing. They'll sharpen up in the second half. we got things to sharpen up. But, uh, you know, Goulet put a good charge into it, kind of kicked it a little bit there left. But uh, overall, coming out in the first half and, and, and coming out fast and, and, uh, and getting some touchdowns on the board, couldn't be happier. And, We'll get there in halftime and figure some things out. Uh, Coach, I know you had two uh, two players, Rasheem Biles and Terrence Alexander, had great runs, for, uh, put the ball in the end zone for you. But a couple of the holding penalties there, are you going to work on that a little bit too? Yeah, well, we actually sharpened it up a little bit from our last two scrimmages where we're getting our hands out around their shoulder pads, and uh, we're doing it well as we get tired. So these guys got to get their conditioning. they got to understand they got to keep their hands in and, and still be physical about it. And, hey, is it air-conditioned up there where you guys are? <laughs> no, it is not. It isn't down here. <laughs> yeah, it isn't. Okay. But, but you look great in sweat, and no sweat in the second <laughs> half. Continuous clock. Jay, thanks for being a class act and giving us time here at halftime. All right, guys. Hey, we appreciate what you do for high school football. Take care. Thanks, Jay. Jay, we appreciate you, too. Coming up now is the Door Depot Halftime Show. We'll talk to the commissioner and president of the OCC, go over some scores from games happening right now. At the break, the Tigers on top of the Patriots, 35-0. This is Central Ohio Toyota Dealers Friday Night Rivals presented by Columbus State Community College on the CW Columbus. It's ridiculous. Uh, no, we're having you in at the same time. No, we're having you together. Okay. It's a three shot. It's no sponsorship. <laughs> I've read the uh, OHSA website where they're asking for more officials already. I plugged that site twice in the first half already. Really? Saying the lower level games could be, you know, canceled if we can't get enough yeah. officials. So, yeah. And this is my family down there between the Barneses and Eric Mock, who I trained to be a radio broadcaster to okay. Rick and I work the IFL. Let's go ahead and turn you guys around right now here. Oh, we're going, we're going camera on this? Yeah. On the right here. Come on in here. Get you on the side. Oh, right here. Okay. Oh, oh. That's what that is. Okay. Am I throwing it to the scholar-athlete feature then? Wait, who's getting what? I was going to ask Ken on. the first one. I'll ask you about officiating, maybe. Is that okay? I, he, he, he's been doing more of the official. Okay. He'll do the expansion. I'll, I'll do the expansion. And then, and then he's, he's Mr. COVID. <laughs> well, we can do either You're one sick. after that. I think I should take the first one. You take the second one. All right. I got, we'll go to you first, yeah. then we'll go to Ken. Jeff, do you have a question then? Or? I'll figure something right. out. I'm going by their script here. We got... Was,
At the break on the Door Depot Halftime Report, 35 nothing Pickerington Central over Olentangy Liberty. Glad to have you aboard. Inside the press box, I am joined now by the commissioner of the OCC. Hold your applause for Ken Baker and the <laughs> president of the league, Mr. Mike Starner. I call him Mr. even though I covered him when he was a player 8,000 years ago and his outstanding brother as well, too. And when we talk about the OCC, Mike, I want to start with you. This is getting bigger than my waistline. There's talk of expansion again in just a couple of years. Is that correct? Well, there's not talk about it. We're expanding, and we're super excited to have Logan and Taze Valley join us. Uh, it makes sense on many levels. Uh, they, they've grown. Uh, they, they create interesting rivalries and matchups with us and their geographical locations, certainly are facilities, but they're just great people and we can't wait to have them on board. Well, Ken, as a follow-up to that, I've got to ask you, what's it like then to be the commissioner over so many teams, <laughs> larger than some states, I think? I know. We, we're we're, we're going to start using name badges, Randy. <laughs> Well, I want to ask you, too, about officiating, too. We kind of touched on this as well, too. There's a lot of people that think officiating is you know, very difficult to do and don't want to try, but maybe it's not as hard as they think. And I think fans are a little more subdued now. I think we're feeling better now about ourselves and maybe nicer after the pandemic. So probably an optimum time for looking for more officials because they are in need right now, are they not? We, we certainly hope that people will consider, especially young folks, will consider uh, working as officials, especially at the lower levels. I mean, we're, we're trying, working with OHSAA and, and Commissioner Ute on, on trying to get some things together. One of the things we're frankly we're looking at, we, we, we give high school credit for a lot of different items. I mean, we, you can have marching band credit, you can have dance team credit. Why not give credit for high school physical education if you decide you want to be an official? You can get the credit, you can get your license as an official, and then, you know, we're not saying that, you know, they should be working varsity games or even JV games. But if we can get some of these young kids indoctrinated and licensed, why can't they work medal level in freshman games? I, I think it's a great opportunity for kids to make, make a little pocket change and, and maybe something that they'll be enticing to do in the future. OHSAA.org slash officiating for more information. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Some of these el older officials out there, I know they want to mentor some of these young people as well. You know, talk about we're here for football, obviously, and maybe that's the prime sport or the premier sport, but the OCC is more about the depth of all the, the, the not only the boys' sports, the girls' sports, and all the sure. extracurriculars, right? Yeah, I mean, we're about kids, you know, whether it's uh, in, in one school particular or across 34 in the coming years. We're super proud at Liberty High School to have 29 varsity sports. I checked the numbers out, out of 888 kids, 514 participating in a fall sport. So participation is key. It uh, doesn't matter if it's uh, cheerleading. I'm partial to that one right now uh, with my daughter at Liberty. And certainly, um, you know, we have field hockey. We have girls and boys bowling in the winter, you know, all the traditional sports across the board. We're lucky at Liberty High School to have great community support and great coaches. Steve Hale and his staff are just amazing human beings and great classroom teachers as well. Super proud of them. I'm partial with the cheerleaders too because I married one from Ohio State, so uh, that's worked out pretty well for me. There, there you go. So, so talk about the fact that you know the strength of the OCC throughout the state of Ohio, and obviously Pickerington Central has been kind of the the shining light there. But the the win by Upper Arlington last year, the depth of the OCC is terrific. I, I, I think, Jeff, that's the big thing is the, is the depth of the conference. There's just so many quality programs, and we, we have, we're blessed with, as, as Mike mentioned, we're blessed with great coaches, great athletic directors, great building administrators, and I think that all contributes. Uh, you know, the, 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 the conversation of 500-plus kids that are involved in athletics, I mean, that's incredible. I, I was talking to Mike just a little bit ago about, you know, when kids roll out of bed in the morning, a lot of times it's not. They're, they're not excited about getting nothing against geometry or, or anything else. But a, that, that connection a lot of times is I have to be at school because I, I've got, you know, soccer or I've got lacrosse or I've got football. That, that's their connection to the schools. You know, Randy, I played for a guy that was all about accountability. That was that guy, Woody Hayes. And he talked about that, and I think that's what you're talking about. It doesn't matter whether it's a math teacher, whether it's a cheerleader, whether it's a football player, accountability is critical. Amen. There's so much going on. You've got to check out the OCC and the great opportunities they have, too. They've adjusted so well to COVID and so many other things. And, gentlemen, I want to thank you for your time at halftime. Ken, when I grow up, I'd like to be a lot like you. Thanks, Randy. I appreciate that. <laughs> and I'd like to be able to hang on the rim like you did, Mike Sterner. Well, you know, I, I'm, just, I'm just glad that our kids are able to – to come together, where, you know, you talk about COVID, the, the student sections, the togetherness. I, I love, oh my gosh, our senior class is, is set the tone for our school year and just for kids to have things to do and, and, and positive people around them leading them. We're so proud of them. That is our glance at the OCC. Time now, let's glance at our scholar athletes here in week number one. 
Ohio Education Association is proud to recognize Central Ohio's Scholar Athletes of the Week. Gabriel Pence is a two-year starter in football at Olentangy Liberty High School. He's also a three-year varsity letter winner in wrestling. Gabe carries a 4.1 GPA. Robert R.J. Keechler is a multi-sport athlete at Pickerington Central High School. He's lettered in basketball, track, and football. R.J. has a 4.0 GPA. Congratulations to these outstanding Ohio Education Association Scholar Athletes. Time now for your Door Depot halftime report. We'll check out some of the scores from around Central Ohio here in week number one of the campaign. And at the half, Jonathan Alder, a big time over Amanda Clear Creek in that contest. Amanda Clear Creek won week one last year, 17 to 7. And now it's all Jonathan Alder here as we go into the season of 2022. Other scores in the area. Canal Winchester on top of Groveport Madison, 7 zip right now at halftime. Canal's won the last two meetings. And Groveport's last win in the series came back in 2019. Canal three consecutive playoff bursts for the Indians. Other scores, Bradley over Berlin by a count of 23-14. We will see Bradley next week against Darby. Bradley playoff six of the last seven years. Berlin eight and three last year for the best record in school history. Orange on top of Darby 14-7. Is, it seems like Olin Tangy wants to play Hilliard a lot here. Darby won the meeting last year 17 zip. Pick North on top of Lancaster. That is always a war, Jeff, when those two teams get together, isn't it? Absolutely. And, uh, certainly uh, had a great season last year, but Pickerington North 
a win over Pickerington Central. They were proud of that. North won last year by a count of 23-10. Other scores in the area, Marysville, New Albany, and the Eagles. Kind of surprising, Marysville blanking the Monarchs early on 14-0. New head coach for New Albany and Brian Fintix over Marysville 17-4 in the last two years and three consecutive playoff berths. The Monarchs lost in the fourth round of the playoffs last year. See that Upper Arlington and Reynoldsburg, that was the game we had last year where Upper Arlington got two late touchdowns. Mark Fillmore, the new head coach for the Raiders and... Up Arlington on top without Carson Greesock, I might mention, too. 14-7 the score at the half in that one. And Davidson over Walnut Ridge, 23-12 to in that contest as those two teams get together in week number one. And Davidson will have in week number 10 against the Golden Bears. In this one, it's all Pickerington Central, 35 nothing Highlights and stats from the first half when we come back here on the CW Columbus. Is this your highlight package? All right, go ahead. Okay. Biles, Biles, Alexander, Alexander, Alexander. Stat sheets. Just all the touchdown runs. Right. Welcome back to the Door Depot Halftime Report. 35-0, pick central over Olentangy Liberty. Randy Reinhardt, Jeff Logan here at halftime. And when you use the word domination, sometimes it doesn't talk about all phases of the game. I think we've seen that from the Tigers in the first half. Yeah, they're a really good football team, and that takes nothing away from Liberty. I think Liberty is going to have a successful season, but this is a very powerful Pickerington Central team with a lot of speed. And a lot of great running backs. They scored five times. First of all, we can see that big number three takes in Raheem Biles for touchdown. He does it twice, in fact, for the first two scores. Yeah, Biles is a solid football player at 200, but then they come out with their speed package, and Terrence Alexander takes over. This made it 21 to nothing. Terrence Alexander uh, had three touchdowns in the first half, and then we have the, the interception. Here's another one of the Terrence Alexander scores for a touchdown. 
and it was all Pickerington again. Shotgun formation. Guess who? Terrence Alexander, Randy, takes over again. And we'll check out some of the stats in the first half. By the way, by the way, Alexander, nine carries, 142 yards and three touchdowns. And Biles, six carries, 40 yards, two touchdowns. There's the total offense in the first half. Look at the numbers. Those tell the story. Negative seven yards rushing for the Patriots in the first half. Two turnovers. That big interception by Grimes as well, too. So they dominated in all phases. Goulet did a great job kicking as well, too. We should mention, too, that we offered Coach Hale the opportunity for a conversation. He turned us down again for a conversation. 35 nothing to score here at halftime. Second half around the corner. We'll remind you, this is Central Ohio Toyota Dealers Friday Night Rivals presented by Columbus State Community College on the CW Columbus. Welcome back to Pickerington Central High School, the Pickerington High School Central Tiger Marching Band. Doing what they do best, they put on quite a performance tonight, and we're happy to put the musical round spotlight on them. Our best wishes to all the students in the band this season. Go Tigers, and thank you for representing your school so well. Just about ready for the start of the second half and set now for the Buckeye State Bank kickoff. Start enjoying the benefits of banking local with Buckeye State Bank. Get started today by visiting joinbsb.com. Mr. Goulet out there to boot it again. Carson doing a good job. Impressed by his performance as just a sophomore. He had a pretty busy night tonight. And uh, the one thing I want to see uh, Mr. Goulet do eventually during his Pickerington career is make a tackle. <laughs> Did you as a running back just out of curiosity? Absolutely. Okay. And the return is going to start from the 15-yard line for the Patriots. And 
Justing up across the 35. And 36 is Jacob Barkas. So Barkas returns it some 21 yards. And the offense takes the field first. Remember, Liberty had the option in the first half and they deferred. So the offense will scoot onto the field now for Olin Tangy Liberty down in this contest by a count of 35 nothing and since we're 30 or more Jeff too that continuous clock will be a factor here in the second half yeah, this is where you talk about the pride of your football team and your seniors and I know that they have spent a lot of time trying to develop a positive culture on the old Tangy Liberty football team this is going to be a test of that culture tonight as they enter the second half down 35 to nothing and a challenge too for Steve Hale at halftime who I'm sure he gave a marvelous speech to his team roll out by Leonard gets away from the pressure guns it on the out I think Oakley was out of bounds when he caught the ball to begin with he was so the pass is incomplete but Leonard did a magical job of getting away from that pressure and trying to gun the out pattern to Oakley but it falls out of bounds as he stepped on the sidelines as soon as he caught the ball get a great shot here from our sideline Shot really good pressure up the middle and good poise by the quarterback. And you can see right there, stepped on the line. Here's again from the ground level coming right at you. It's a battle of 15s as Lane came up from the secondary. You mentioned his track speed. How about the composure of that quarterback, though? Second down and 10 now on the quick pop and the out. And that is Nelson. Ethan out to around the 42 and spins to the 43-yard line before Crozier knocks him down there. So a good gain on second down. We'll set up a third down and short now. You like the sticks along the far side of the field with the LED read out there on the do. downs? I do. I think it's a lot easier for the fans to be able to see. No question for the officials either. Close to being a horse tackle or horse collar tackle. Excuse me. On a third down play for Leonard. Again, the quick out. Dumps it. Goes to Struck. Has the catch. Does he get to the sticks? He needed to get up to around the 47. And indeed, nicely done by Jake. And again, building a little momentum. Something they could have used perhaps in the first half. But good job by Coach Hale to adjust. Remember, Randy, I talked about shortening the passing game a little bit. Not throwing the ball so deep. Give your quarterback a chance to be able to find a receiver short. And especially in this game, 35 to nothing, you can guarantee that Pickerington is going to keep everything in front of them, and it's going to be hard to throw the ball up over top. Obviously, motion before the play here is the penalty. Dead ball. False start. Offensive line. First down. So the home appliance solutions first down will start five yards further back as the clock continues to melt here. Down to already 9.20 left to go in the third quarter. We've got a special guest. Another person that I look up to who will join us here in just a couple of minutes. When did the world get so tall, Jeff? <laughs> I hear you. He's a guy that is currently a Tiger, but soon will be a Buckeye. First and 15 for Leonard and company back to the 41-yard line. This time he rolls to the right. And the toss downfield on the out pattern was Biles in bounce. He was out of bounds trying to make the pick again. You need one foot in bounce in high school football. And they're going to say that Raheem did not have one foot in. Let's take a look on the far side if we can get an angle here. Yeah, Biles playing that free safety position. Breaks on the football. Let's see if he comes down. Great nope. call by the yep. officials. No question about it. And again, one foot in high school football. There's no such thing as an uncatchable football as well, too. Ooh, and and we also penalty. had a penalty on the play as well, too, against the Tigers. It's a major one, too. A personal foul. Roughing the quarterback. Wondered. Yep. Defense number 15. First down. Again, Lane getting the pressure, and this time found the avenue that got him there a little too late. So mark it across the 50, all the way down to the 43-yard line. Another Home Appliance Solutions first down, this time on the short side of the field for Lettering and Company. Andrew, a sophomore, one of three passing, because last year J.J. Siebert and Ryan Groey saw the bulk of the action. He's a sophomore. His running back to his left, Jake Struck, also an underclassman. Some experience, though, in the offensive line on the right side. And the handoff goes to Struck, carries defenders. Struck is a guy that looks like a fullback, but kind of has the speed of a halfback, doesn't he? Yeah, he can slash a little bit in there, Randy. Pretty good size, though, at a sophomore at uh, 185 pounds. And see the quarterback, uh, Andrew Leonard, looking for the play from the sidelines. Mr. Struck there beside him. Well, and that is R.J. Keechler. You know, at the beginning of this drive, they abandoned the run altogether. Now they've gone back to the running game. And now the quick slant, the pass for Nelson. And that's a pass maybe that can be more of a touch pass. Looking for Nelson on the slant and maybe a little too hard for Evan. Yeah, but look how deep that defense is playing, Randy. Again, the underneath is going to be there all evening. Not that that's going to get you back into this ball game, trailing 35 to nothing, but it does build confidence in your football team. 
if you can get your young quarterback to be able to connect on some of those plays. And I assume you go for it here in a fourth down in just about five. Absolutely. Quick pop and struck, remembered everything but the football. So a change of possession, the Tigers will get it back, and now a word from our friends at Toyota. With a new Toyota, you can practically make summer stand still. From making a splash in a Highlander to fitting in more fun in a Camry or tackling a trailhead in a RAV4 hybrid. Who's a good boy? Enjoy the last of summer in an exciting new Toyota during Toyota's national sales event. Save big on the best-selling SUV, Toyota RAV4, like this electrified RAV4 hybrid with fuel savings over $3,700. Save even more with 1.9 APR financing. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. And the Tigers have it now first and ten. On the second possession of the... Second half of the first by them and a nice gliding move and out across the 40 to around the 42 yard line on the play is Middendorf. But there's a flag on the play and a holding call against the Tigers and we're going to bring it back. We've got a special guest upstairs too, Jeff Logan. I mentioned a guy that I look up to, right? Yeah, we all do. And he is the one and only Devin Royal, who, if you're a basketball fan, you know what he did for the Tigers. They're a state championship legend. And this is a guy that recently made a basketball committed to a local school, perhaps, right? Yes, sir. Yes, Why sir. did you choose Ohio State? Uh, just how they treat their players. It's like family. Uh, I got a great connection with all the coaches, and it's just great to be there and close to home. So that's got to be good for you. But I know Michigan State and other schools were in the mix, right? Yes, sir. And you had a chance to go ahead and see the other schools and think about it. Did you talk to Coach Holtman? Did he tell you what your role might be with the Buckeyes in the future? Yeah, he said a little bit about it. He's just saying how uh, just be a leader, be a big role model on the uh, court, and be a big impact when I first get there. Uh, that time it was Gray on the carry for a short game of the play. So you have that all going for you. Now, your dad, I think, wasn't he Daryl? Yeah. And I covered him when he played football at Groveport, oh, right? Really? Yes. <laughs> so this is my second generation. I mean, did you know that basketball was your sport, and would you rather be on the field tonight as well, too? Uh... I wasn't really feeling uh, football as much. Uh, I just love basketball and loved it. My dad was kind of mad about it, but, you know, <laughs> I mean, he got used to it, though, that's for sure. Yeah, what do you think about your boys tonight? Up 35 to nothing. Uh, you got to be close to the football team, right? Hey, yeah, I'm cool with everybody. I mean, it's, it's a pretty easy game for them today, for real. <laughs> and it's drop back and a look, and the out pattern. The pass is complete on the play. And Maddox on the reception. Well, I got to ask you this, too. I know this is kind of strange to talk to a young person about, but nutrition and diet is very important to you. You've already got yourself in that frame of mind that it takes some people 30 or even 40 years to kind of get through. What are you doing nutrition wise? Uh, I've been on a meal plan for about a year now since last um, summer. Um, it was hard to begin, but you know, once you get like into it a lot, get used to it, I mean, it's just a part of your life. All right, so where do you project in the, uh, on, the, on the basketball team with Ohio State? Are you going to play the uh, – are you a forward? Are you a small forward? Which, where are you uh, at? Probably like a wing. What their play style is, just like a point guard, center, and then just three guys in the middle that just can do everything. So I feel like we'll have a great team this next year and this year. Do you hit the threes? Yeah, for sure. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he can do all three. You know, Jeff used to be able to hang on the rim. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. yeah, when they a, lowered it to clean it. With, oh, a, with okay. a trampoline. <laughs> hey, hey. Go ahead. I, was gonna, I was just going to say, playing in your hometown, that adds a little bit of pressure. There's some benefit to it as well, but there's a lot of eyes on you. You're aware of that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm just going to go out and do my thing, do whatever we need to do for us to win. So uh, I feel very happy about it. Congratulations on everything. We yes, appreciate sir. you coming up here. Watch this post with I do okay. Yeah, yeah. There's Good no contact in the Big Ten, is there? Nah, no, nah, not at all. Get used to it. You'll need it. Put Devin's this back on because yeah, you really look good with that on there. <laughs> it's beach night tonight. There he goes. You can't even see the top of his head for crying out loud. Thanks, bro. Devin Royal, our guest here. Flag on the last play as Phil Colflish tells us about the holding call. So the Tigers now have marched back inside the 30-yard line. Look at you. Alexander going off that time. Look at you thinking you could post him up. I just had to do that. That's the Indiana in me. Are you kidding me? Who was my next door neighbor in college? Uh, Mike Woodson. It doesn't matter. You can't post him up. My brother's coach for 54 years. Oh, my gosh. The handoff this time, and there's a little gap up the middle. Short game to across the 32 to the 33-yard line. And now you're looking at a clock, Jeff, that is already under three minutes left to go with Knowledge Gray on the carry again. I mean, this third quarter, as rapidly as you think it would go with a continuous clock, has gone even faster, I think, than both teams thought. So now you look at the scenario for the Tigers. 
Is this the first punt of the night? For That's what I would think. It's the first Tigers punt by Pickerington all evening long. It gives you some idea of the control. And here's Coach. Still one man short on special teams, so they're going to hustle somebody out on the field. Casey Mittendorf, the lonely man back there, saying, let me see if I remember how to do this. With 2.20 left. Snap. There's the boots. And they yell fire and clear out of the way. It will trickle inside the 30. To the 29-yard line. Patriots will get it back. We'll take a break. 2.06 left to go. 35 nothing. Tigers up here on the CW Columbus. Fans, it's the biggest plays, the biggest schools, the best high school football, period. You get to see it first thanks to First Scores on Fox 28, sponsored by Spectrum, tonight at 1045 and only, only, only on Fox 28. Randy Reinhardt, Jeff Logan, Jake Stewart, cast of several. There's your favorite Why did they not have things like that when we were playing a long time ago? You wanted, I, you wanted your picture on something? I saw your Orange Bowl picture again. <laughs> with all the hair? I saw that with all the Goldilocks that you had. That's right. Dean Marini, our producer, said it. he doesn't think cardboard was invented then. It was just papyrus still stuck to a tree. So let's see what the Patriots can do with the second possession for them of the second half. Down 35 zip. They'll keep it on the ground and burrow their way out across the 30 to around the 33-yard line. As that time on the carry for Liberty is number 22. That is Blake Voorhees. So right now, you've got the out pattern working for you on that prior possession for the Patriots. What do you think Coach Hale's progression is this time? Well, again, I think what he's looking for is give his quarterback some, some confidence. you got a young guy out there, sophomore year. You want to try and build some uh, ability for him to be able to look for some positive and again this is a read option bad decision back there in the backfield not much to to go on i think you got to continue to throw the football not from a standpoint of getting back into this football game i think that's over with but the idea of just building confidence with this young quarterback great penetration at time for the tigers by big number 66 dayon thompson green who was waiting almost to take the handoff and then it was third down and again, they peer to the sidelines, get the information from Coach Hale and company. Mentioned Brent Morrison, a great addition to this coaching staff for the Patriots. Pass down across the middle and intercepted. Picked off this time by Biles. Raheem weaving his way through the traffic inside the 15 to the 10. Stiff arm and takes it in for his third touchdown, his first defensive touchdown, 55 yards on the return. And there's your Ramos roofing touchdown again. Get your free estimate on a roof by calling or texting 614-761-ROOF. Now well, that'll put six more on the board. And again, I think the third or fourth interception tonight. And there is a flag on the play, though. We're coming back. It's negated by a hanky at the 37-yard line. Holy smokes. And that was well away from the play. Let there be no doubt about it. That was a silly penalty. Whatever it is, it's going to negate the touchdown on the pick six. Here's the call. First down for the now hold it. Defense. They were first down. Phil Colflesh, your referee. Again, your umpire, Eric Mock. Linesman, Rick Barnes. Adam Barnes is on the line, judge back, judge Zach Olszewski, and the center judge, Nate Ferdinand. We're going to see a lot more of the center judge 
Jeff, this season, maybe in just about every game, that extra official back there by the referee and the handoff, and there's nothing there. Great job by the defense to penetrate and come shooting through. As you can see, a combination of players, including number 14, and that is Isaiah Harper making the hit. That, let's see if they can get off one more play, perhaps, before the end of the third quarter. Now, what you don't like to see is a bunch of your offensive linemen looking at each other going palms up. Like, who are you going to block, or are you going to do your job? That time there was confusion, it looked like to me, in that offensive line. Under five ticks left to go. Let's see if they can snap in time for Leonard and company. He does so with one and a half. On the out, nothing there. Looks, tries to buy some time, and now throws it downfield and pass incomplete. Looking for Roberts. And that'll end the third quarter. Rapidly played, 35 nothing. Still the tally on beach night. Sun and fun, even with the moon out tonight in Pickerington, up by five touchdowns right here on the CW Columbus. Folks, it would not be high school football without the band, and the Olin Tangy Liberty High School Band put on a terrific performance at halftime tonight. Music Around is proud to sponsor this marching band and its spotlight look. So congratulations to the Patriot Marching Band. Great job at halftime of this contest and a chance to relax and start new friendships. The start of your year, week number one. For many districts, school has started. For some, it doesn't start till next week, so it's just good to get together with friends again, and especially in the world that we lived in when for the last couple of years, Jeff, you probably didn't see much of your friends, if at all. This is the first time that uh, I really feel like the thing is in the rearview mirror and people are out able to enjoy themselves. Leonard, kind of a near bubble screen, has it on the play to Oakley. Nice gain on the play. On the sidelines, was trying to cross the sticks at the 50 yard line. And let's see where they mark him out of bounds if he's got enough for the first down. By the way, I was sent a picture of Jeff Todd in Jeff, his gold, Jeff. Jeff Logan, excuse me, from Mike Todd. Jeff Logan in his uh, Goldilocks days. And we'd have to share that with the rest of the class sometime. So they're going to say he's about a yard shy. We've got a cramping player in the secondary for the Tigers down at the 38-yard line. Take a look at this one more time. Well, I forgot all about cramping. Uh, normally in week one, we're, we're here till 2 in the morning because of all the cramping that goes on. This is the first situation we've had tonight, which gives you some idea of the conditioning of both of these football teams. That only one guy so far gone down with a hydration situation. That is Mr. Grimes who went down, who had that pick, remember, the first half of some 54 yards, and he's hobbling off the field. He got hit from behind, too, so you got to hope that it is just a cramping situation. And, Jeff, that's one of those scenarios where you have to prep for, what, a day or two in advance, correct? Absolutely. you got to work on it all week and make sure your diet's good, make sure you're hydrating. What a great job the training staffs do here in Central Ohio as well, uh, working with the coaches and the football players, educating them and being able to support them. And you can see a lot of difficulty getting off the field, or that's a new dance move. Now, I was a big proponent always of bananas with the potassium and everything. Did you do that when you were younger or not? You know, I don't recall that being a, a thing. Uh, I just think that uh, making sure you got enough water in you was the key. 
Dr. Robert Murphy. Uh, Dr. Bob. Who was our uh, yeah. team physician, is the one that really pioneered the idea of getting the salt out of the uh, out of the player and making sure that you replace the fluids that the player is losing. It's a fourth down and one now. And the Tigers bringing the kitchen sink, and I think they may have violated the neutral zone and encroached. And it'll be a gift first down. It'll be the, early, the easiest first down that they're going to have in the 22 season. Dead ball season. foul, encroachment, defense, number 14. So mark it down five yards to the 46-yard line. And I will say this, the Patriots have been able to cross midfield a few times here in the second, third, and fourth quarter. Yeah, now you know why Coach Lamonico never smiles. There you go, yeah. <laughs> He's got a birthday coming up, but doesn't he have to smile then? Pressure right up the gut, the quick pop, the pass incomplete. Pressure on the play as they try to get it to Roberts in the person at number 15 on the play, and that's Troy Lane. A lot of Buckeye ties with Lane, and you know, we, we mentioned that. Murkowski, just you know, great bloodlines here. A lot of the guys that played at The Ohio State University, Jeff, decided to call this area home, as you did in the past. Absolutely. I'm a little surprised to see that Troy Lane, with that great speed, is not part of the offensive mix somewhere. It could yes. be something happening. Yes, yes exactly. Show it when you need it. And speaking of needed it, they needed some yardage here, and they find it there. Blake Voorhees with a nice little zigzag run to get another first down as we approach 10 minutes left to go here in regulation in this contest. And that is another first down brought to you by Bowling Green State University. And while you were away on that replay, Voorhees got it again, this time off the left side. Picks up about eight on the play. It'll set up a second down and short as we're under 10 left to go here. And he's been a nice burst in the last couple series for the Patriots. Second down, and they're going to mark it back at around the 25-yard line. They need three to move the six again. And this time the Tigers are on to him. Great job to undercut that play by Elisha Carter. As you notice, Jeff, he went low. He also had help high. And they're able to submarine the play for probably a loss of one. Boy, that front defensive line, uh, really a three-man front, does a really good job of putting pressure. Ball falls out of the hands of the quarterback. Good and recovery Henry by Leonard, Leonard. Yep. is going to attract a bunch. And we got a helmet coming off for the second time for the quarterback. Not a good sign. And that will bring Tobias Cage into the game to take over at quarterback for the Patriots. Is that a matter of the helmet not being on tight enough or what? Uh, that's a matter of uh, a lot of sweat building up. <laughs> Again, ball falling right out of your hands. And uh, just the speed and the collision in this game. It's just happens. Lane was the first on the hit again. It'll be fourth down. Ball back at the 27-yard line. Quick pop, and it's picked off. Look out. To the races they go. It couldn't be Biles again, could it? Oh, yes, it could. Down to sidelines. Never take it easy, son. Boy, that's one of those things. I think there's going to be a little talk about the oh, slowdown yeah. that time as he takes it in for the touchdown. Another Ramos roofing touchdown. Get your free estimate on a roof by calling or texting 614-761-ROOF. And then it was 41 nothing. That is unacceptable at all levels. I mean, great play by the free safety, able to make the play. But number one, you do not do this to the other football team. That's first. And secondly, you could affect your team's outcome by jogging down the field like this in that kind of a situation. Jay Sherritt is going to be livid with that play. Roberts nearly got the tackle, 77 yards on the return. All I have to do is remind you of New Albany and Reynoldsburg a few years ago where New Albany actually came back to win that game in double overtime. Extra point time now for Carson Goulet with 8.15 left to go to make it 42 zip. High snap put down nicely. Kick is up, and the kick is good. He's been perfect on extra points and has missed only a field goal. Now another message from our good friends at Toyota. With a new Toyota, you can practically make summer stand still. From making a splash at a Highlander to fitting in more fun in a Camry or tackling a trailhead in a RAV4 hybrid. Who's a good boy? Enjoy the last of summer in an exciting new Toyota during Toyota's national sales event. Save big on the best-selling SUV, Toyota RAV4, like this electrified RAV4 hybrid with fuel savings over $3,700. Save even more with 1.9 APR financing. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. 
Olin Tangi Liberty looking to make a statement here late in this game down 42 nothing as that pick by Biles takes it the distance some 77 yards and Pickerington Central never really had to look back early on in this contest they got their ground game going and Jeff solid play at offense defense and the one thing on defense Jay Sherrod is he told me you know let's make sure we play behind them early on if Olin Tangi Liberty goes to that rapid style of football. We want to make sure that if we give up something, it's underneath and not deep. They did that, and now that they have the big lead, they can go ahead and take some chances, and they've done that with a couple of picks to set up some big scoring plays for the Tigers. Goulet with the boot again. And the return going to start from the 13-yard line. And for the third time, Jacob Barkas on return. Randy, I want to talk to you quickly about this field, the surface that we're playing yeah, you're on gonna tonight. Say that kind it of is grass, right? You know, I spoke with uh, Jay Sherritt uh, uh, back in February, and I said, "Do you guys finally have artificial turf on your field?" He said, "Jeff, we did a bunch of research. We tried to raise some money. We couldn't get it done, and then we found this Bermuda grass." And if anybody is familiar with playing golf down south, you know what Bermuda grass is. It's kind of a wiry kind of a grass, and this is holding up so much better than the traditional grass that they've had on other fields. It, 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 it goes dormant in the months of November, so this thing will turn all brown, but the difference is they have a field that has great playability, and they don't have to have that artificial surface. On the Bowling Green State University first down, the quick pop over the middle. Pass is complete on the play, but there's a flag as well at the end of the play as Jacob Chapman makes the catch, and we'll see what the hanky is all about. Looks like all number twos are in the game for Pickerington. Sideline so, warning is the call all right. against the Tigers. So. And I think that's the coaches over there trying to get the players in the right position. Again, I mentioned that they've got the seconds in the game, which I think is the right thing to do here. Gage at quarterback, 6 feet, 165 at a junior. He's going to hand it off and look at the gap right up the middle that time. Still spinning and fighting and getting a nice gain on the play. That is Ryan Schapker, 5'11", 195, and a sophomore. So they go from running back number 48 to 49 with 6.33 left to go. And they've got a first down inside the 40 at the 39-yard line. Chapter again. And he's just trying to hold on to that football as the defenders get him in a triangle. When you get that, Jeff, one guy can go after the football and try to strip it, but Shafter holds on to it and gets a minimal gain of about a yard on the play down inside the 39 near the 38 as we're down to six minutes left to go here in this contest. Again, we've had the continuous clock in the second half, 35 nothing. The Tigers march down to that lead after two quarters. And Gage this time will roll and take it himself and get it inside the 30, inside the 25. Nice job that time by Toby to get the first down. You know, the one thing defensively, obviously, Randy, they're trying to accomplish is a shutout. That's one of the things that's critically important to a football team. If you've got an opportunity for a shutout, you want to make sure you get it. But also what's important is to get players out there and get experience in real game situations. So uh, don't expect uh, Pickerington to be sending the number ones back in there uh, at this stage of the football game. First and 10 from the 24-yard line for Gage and Company. And again, we'll hand it off. And it's again, Shapker on the carry. Short game that play. You know, I had a chance earlier this week to talk to Jay Sherritt, the head coach of the Tigers, the only head coach they've had at Pickerington Central. And I talked about his 20 years as the head of the program. It's also my 20th year as being the head football coach. And, uh, I mean, it's been a tremendous experience. And, uh, you know, we, we never planned on winning this many football games. But, fortunately, our staff stuck with me over the years. And, and uh, we started piling up the wins, and then you kind of get used to it, and then you work harder at it. It's been, uh, it's been something I cherish, no doubt about it. And, finally, what is and what a masterful job he has done, too. 146 and 69 in his career as the pass that time goes to Austin Molina, who makes the catch. And the other thing is, Jeff, during the 20 years, that staff has stayed pretty much intact for two decades. I remember being back here in the early 2000s with this football program when they were just becoming special. You could tell it was going to be a really good program. 
Gage and company inside the bath fit a red zone and throws that one away. And we'll get another playoff for them. Transform your bathroom in one day. Get started at bathfitter.com. One player's name that comes to mind from those early days with a guy by the name of Shane Bowen. You remember Shane Bowen? I remember uh, that story. Yeah, yes. it's a great story And that Shane Bowen wasn't being recruited by anybody. And we came out here and did a game. And I went off on this guy because he was one of the most terrific football players I'd ever seen. Well, they took a lot of that film and a lot of that tape from that game, sent it out there. Georgia Tech made an offer as we see the ball snap back there. The problem, throw it out of bounds. That's going to be fine. So Shane Bowen gets an opportunity to go down to Georgia Tech to be able to play college football. He goes on, has a terrific career, graduates, been in the coaching business now forever. His current position, defensive coordinator for the Tennessee Titans for Mike Vrabel. And we'll take a break and talk more when we get back here on the CW Columbus. Fans, Central Ohio Toyota Dealers Friday Night High School Rivals brings you the battle for Hilliard next Friday night when Hilliard Darby takes on Hilliard Bradley. Take Hilliard in that game. It starts at 7 o'clock right here on the CW Columbus. And on the first down play, they'll hand it off the left side. And new faces continue on both sides of the football out there for the Tigers. A new quarterback out there, I think it's Rocco Williams. Big number 19 running the offense and you look at his size and you look at his frame and you go excuse me freshman <laughs> I know freshman they grow them big out here and Randy there are traditions that are attracting football crazy families to come settle at Pickerington on the second down and four and he will keep it again and this time a nice little sojourn off the left side for Williams it's time now to check out our player of the game here in week number one on Friday Night Rivals. There were a couple of choices, I think, for that. And, Jeff, you and I debated, flipped the coin, and gave it to Terrence Alexander because of what he did on the ground in limited attempts. Nine carries and a third of those good for touchdowns and rushed for over the century mark. Yeah, I don't know that there's going to be many kids that are going to have uh, opening games with these kinds of stats and this kind of success. Three touchdowns on the evening. On the other side, we've got... Rasheem Biles has got three touchdowns of his own, including the first two of the game, and one pick six that went into the end zone. One that got called back, actually. Uh, but certainly Terrence Alexander deserves the player of the game. Well, easily, Raheem Biles could have been the player of the game as well, too, as that time. Aaron Heller on the carry, 5'10", 205, and a junior. And again, you know, I don't know how to compare this, but if you know Division Three college football, I almost compare Pickering Central to Mount Union, you know, because they can dress 1 to 99, and they have numbers like 83A, 87A, 98A. They have enough to go over 100 players. So that's just the success of the program. And that's why we talk about so many times they have talented players that are only one-year starters because they work their way up through the system they get some time maybe as a junior on the varsity, but then full-time as a starter on the varsity. The toss, that was a forward pass if you want to really be accurate on that. <laughs> a that shovel was a pass. Forward. Remember, there's a forward pass and a backward pass. There's no such thing as a lateral. And there is the mighty golden orb that will go to the Tigers in a mere 60 seconds from right now. And we will talk to Jay Sherritt. And the good news is, Jeff, we're going to send you down on the sidelines and have you hand the trophy to him. Oh, you are. And get killed in the mosh uh -huh. pit. No, we're not. We'll yeah. talk to Jay on headsets, though. That's coming up 
in about 45 seconds and some change from right about now as the Tigers look across the field. Probably one, one more play and then call it a game. And there's the eyes of a freshman you just saw. Quarterback of the future, perhaps. He'll take it around the left-hand side and go down at the 37-yard line. And that will be the last time that we'll have a tackle in this contest. And you want to talk about domination. You saw it here in this game by Pickerington Central, Jeff. I mean, in all phases of this contest, the early statements, they kept the Liberty offense at bay. We talked about the numbers for that Pickerington Tiger defense last year, how dominant they were. And I think we're going to see more of the same. They average giving up 143 yards per contest. Third down conversions by opponents, only 22%. And they get the victory convincingly here in week number one, 42 nothing. the final tally in this one. Jay Sherrick checking his troops, making sure everybody goes to the handshake line and got to be happy with the performance. I'm sure we'll get some updates from him about things he's happy about, maybe one or two things, but not many to work on, Jeff, no, after this 42 nothing win. You know, they're never, never going to be short of uh, mistakes to be able to find on that tape when they review it and, and, and come back to coaching those guys for the next week. So uh, it's a long season. They expect it to be a 14-game season here at Pickerington, which takes them all the way through the playoffs. You and I go to the curb for a second, and we give the main lane right now to Toyota. With a new Toyota, you can practically make summer stand still. From making a splash in a Highlander to fitting in more fun in a Camry or tackling a trailhead in a RAV4 hybrid. Who's a good boy? Enjoy the last of summer in an exciting new Toyota during Toyota's national sales event. Save big on the best-selling SUV, Toyota RAV4, like this electrified RAV4 hybrid with fuel savings over $3,700. Save even more with 1.9 APR financing. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. Welcome back to Pickerington Central High School with the great turf that Jeff Logan is in love with here. <laughs> so many years when you came to the valley here, if there's any rain at all, oh, it would just it flood. Was nasty. Or then if there were too many events, the grass would be just a rumor. This is that short, short Bermuda grass as well, too, so it doesn't show much wear. And really done a wonderful job with this facility. And we'll also see Pickerington North has that same kind of scenario as well, too. So congratulations to the grounds keeping crew here at Pickerington Central as the Tigers get the victory in this contest by a count of 42 to nothing. You know, a lot happens in a day. So turn to Central Ohio's most watched local news team, Bob Kendrick, Station Akin, and Marshall McPeak for the final word on the day's top stories impacting you, your family, and your community. ABC 6 News is on your side tonight at 11 o'clock. I watch him at 11. I watch him at 4.30 in the morning and at 6, at 8, at 9, at noon, at 5, 5.30 and 6, and even at 7 for a conversation. Let's go down to the field right now, and Jay Sharon is joining us down on the field. Coach, I know that young lady. I talked to her before <laughs> the game. Congratulations to both of you. Is she really the head coach? Well, I'll tell you what. She gives a lot of orders if she's not the head coach, but... Uh... Um, you know, it's part of our Tiger football family, and, and everybody's a part of everything that, that came together to pull this game off tonight. And then and these guys had a great performance and couldn't be happier. Can you talk about the one-two punch you had in the backfield, and Alexander and Biles, not only that on offense, but on defense with uh, Raheem as well, too. And then also Lane was just a missile coming through defensively. Can guys, you touch on all that? Well, when you have, uh, you know, you got Raheem Biles and then Terrence Alexander, both those guys saw creases and took them. And then, you know, when you see our guys playing both ways, I think that's just a reflection of how much they, they love to play football. And, and we came out on week one and, and in front of our home crowd and had a good performance and uh, just had to be 1-0. And, and then we got to be ready to go down to Elder next week. Yep. Coach, talk about your defense. They get a shutout against a pretty good football team, well-coached Steve Hale football team. you got to be proud of your defense as well. Yeah, Coach Monaco had those guys in the right place. I mean, if, if Liberty gets clicking, they're pretty difficult to stop. But then we like that some of our twos and threes and JV guys came in there and, and stopped in the red zone and, and kept the uh, shutout intact. Happy about that also. Well, congratulations to both head coaches there. And happy birthday a little early there, Coach Serrett. With that being said, we would like to formally present you with that golden orb as champions on Friday night rivals guys let's hear it they're, they're happy Thanks, congratulations coach Take care. Well, what a night it was as you look at the final numbers you know we 
talked about opponents averaging 144 yards. The Patriots only managed 124 tonight. Pickering can central almost at their average of what they normally do for a contest last year. So some things don't change, Jeff. Yeah, and 35 offensive points, Randy. They had a pick six in there to make it 42. Uh, total domination from the very beginning of this football game. A lot of coaching moments, I think, on both sides of the ball. Be curious to see how these two teams develop over the rest of the season. Sir, it has been a pleasure Enjoyed working with you. you tonight. And we're going to remind everybody that next week we've got a great contest. We go to Hilliard as Darby hits the road for the three-mile drive to Bradley. We'll have that all for you right here next Friday night on the CW Columbus. And as another edition of Central Ohio, Toyota's Friday Night Rivals comes to a close. We'd like to extend a big thank you to all of our sponsors, to Dean Marini and the Image Video Broadcast team. And as we mentioned, join us next Friday night at 7 when Hilliard Darby takes on Hilliard Bradley. Our final score one more time, Pickerington Central showing they're a playoff contender, blanking Olentangy Liberty 42 to nothing. I'll say it one final time. This has been Central Ohio Toyota Dealers Friday Night Rivals presented by Columbus State Community College in one place on the C.W. Columbus.